Here's a look at some of the absolute top players in the league, at least according to the OOTP star rating system, which again, not always completely accurate. Corey Seager, this will be his age 22 season. He returns after not playing at all in 2015, so that's going to be big for the Dodgers. Rizzo, Rendon, Hanley uh, entering his second year with the Phillies. Buster Posey, Brett Laurie, I feel like I said it a million times, but wow, wow, Brett Laurie, wow. Uh, Matt Holliday still up there, even though this is his age 36 season. He's returning to the Cardinals. Jason Hayward, absolute just, uh, he's a war machine, no doubt about it. Grandal, you know, maybe this is a year where he's starting to make his case for best catcher in the league as guys like uh, Molina and Posey get older. Although Posey's still up there and, you know, Molina's still up there too. No doubt about that. Real Muto also lurking in that catcher position. Uh, Cargo, Bregman uh, coming off a 5.6 war uh, 2015. You know, he's going to be key for a Padres team that's trying to turn it around. Don't forget, they added Fernando Tatis Jr., Mike Trout, Trevor Story, and Bryce Harper. Those are your five-star hitters. There you go. Uh, Harper had a huge year last year. Trout won MVP. Story, let's look at Story. Yep, six-war year. Could could still do better, honestly. You know, Story's looking like a real stud in this. Okay, so as far as starting pitchers go, don't worry about this injury to Sabathia. He'll be back in a couple days. Not a huge uh, impact, even though he did have uh, surgery. So hopefully it's not going to affect his overall stats too much. He's been a really consistent pitcher throughout this save, but unfortunately his 2015 was cut short. He missed about the last, you know, maybe 10 starts of the season, last couple months. Strasburg's a four-star guy with four-and-a-half star potential. Sale, Ryu, you know, on uh, Colorado, pretty much the saving grace of that rotation. They have a great offense, and then the starting pitching is just like, well, at least Ryu's pretty good. Price entering his second year with the Cubs. Medlin, a Cy Young winner. Matt Latos has been good. Josh Johnson, I mean, Josh Johnson's been really good. He's been really fun to watch throughout this save. Just, um, well, that's his batting stats. That has not been fun to watch, but I mean, look at the seasons he's put down. 2012, 2013, 2014, 2015. I mean, he's like, he's probably averaging about six war over the course of uh, this save so far. He's been dominant. Cole Hamels had a really good year last year. Bumgarner joining the Cardinals. Trevor Bauer, I haven't talked about too much, I feel like, but um, generally he's been like a really high, like, strikeouts guy. Um, the ERA has fluctuated some. It's gone from 3.59 to 2.78 to last year 4.51. No doubt he's got the ratings to be like a top tier pitcher in this save. It just hasn't quite happened yet. Maybe it'll be this year. And then Kershaw returns. Kershaw, just like Corey Seager, did not pitch last year. Looks like his ratings are still strong if he's still rated as a five star player. Hopefully he just like, we just forget about what happened in 2015. We forget about that injury, which was a torn flexor tendon in his elbow, I believe, which happened when he threw his alarm clock. Hopefully he get out a new alarm clock, one that he can't throw, and uh, yeah, Clayton Kershaw returns, and he's going to be hopefully competing to be a top-tier pitcher in the league alongside Felix Hernandez, who is, oh my goodness, he really is a New York Yankee. It's, well, at least he won a World Series with the Mariners. Checking in here with the top 100 prospects entering the 2016 season. Number one is going to be Fernando Tatis Jr. He's just 17. We'll see if he makes his MLB debut. I know it's been really accelerated with some of those teenagers, but I suspect that's not going to happen for him this year. Uh, Shane Bieber on the Cleveland Spiders. Looks like he could enter the season in the rotation even. Herman Marquez is actually going to start out as a reliever, it looks like, for the Washington Nationals, but he's a starting pitcher with five-star potential. He's 21. Correa on the Astros, uh, the first overall pick from that 2012 draft. He's coming along. Uh, got as high as AAA last year. I think he could probably make the majors this year. Rafael Devers on the Orioles. Brian Reynolds, we saw him in that first-year player draft on the Dodgers. Lance McCullers Jr. on the Astros. Walker Bueller on the Pirates. Trey Turner, we haven't talked about Trey Turner much, but he's on the uh, Los Angeles Angels. He was drafted sixth overall in that 2013 first-year player draft and actually made his debut for the Angels last year. And it uh, looks like he's going to be on the roster opening day. So that's going to be interesting to see what happens with Trey Turner. And then the last member of the top 10 is Ramon Laureano. Ramon Laureano was drafted eighth overall in that 2013 draft. Uh, and he looks like he's going to start the year at double-A. And uh, really nice ratings on Ramon Laureano. It looks like he could turn into quite the player in this. And he has some really good like qualities, like high work ethic, high uh, intelligence players. They tend to develop pretty well in this game. Some other players from the most recent first-year player draft, Pete Alonso on the Marlins, he's 20. Uh, Ronald Acuna is number 23 on the Boston Red Sox. They also have Cronenworth. Juan Soto is number 28. Here is the rest of your top 100. 
I see uh, Barrios, I see Josh Hader, I see Jordan Alvarez, I see, um, I think I saw Marcus Stroman, I see Paul DeYoung, I see Bo Bichette, uh, and then the last member of the top 100, Brian Mundell. Tell me one thing you know about Brian Mundell right now. Let me know. Let me know in the comments below what you know about Brian Mundell. He's on the uh, Oakland Athletics. So that's your top 100 prospects entering the year. Let's look at preseason predictions. All right, so here are your preseason predictions. According to the game, they have the Rays winning the AL East again. This is what the Rays look like. They added Matt Duffy. They still have really good pitching with Archer, Cobb, Epler, Moore, and Andrew Suarez, who they also added. So hopefully Evan Longoria, we can get a bounce back from him. But those are your Tampa Bay Rays projected to be the winners in the AL East. Don't forget the Yankees had some big ads this offseason. Uh, the AL Central, it's going to be a weak division, is my prediction. We just saw a lot of talent leaving that division, and it was never too strong to begin with. Royals are projected to come out on top. That would be fun to see. Benintendi uh, was such a huge star for them last year. They have Salvador Perez. They have uh, age 37 Jimmy Rollins playing shortstop. Interesting. And they also have Mark Burley, also age 37. So they have some fun veteran players on this team at the very least. I'm curious to see what's going to happen here in the Central. I almost feel like the sleeper team is the Spiders because if they can get Bieber up and going, and if they can get breakout seasons from Ramirez, who has five-star potential, and Lindor has four-star potential, I mean, anything could happen in this division. I wouldn't count the White Sox out either. I feel like everyone is competitive here. Angels projected to win the West. Um, it's a good team. It's a good Angels team. They've kind of done it right. Jared Weaver continues to pitch well for them. He's sort of the ace, but then James Shields is good. They just have guys, you know, that can eat innings for them. Um, Mike Moustakis is really good. Howie Kendrick is really good. Starring Marte is good. Mike Trout is, he's decent, let's be honest. Uh, Gene Segura has generally been pretty good for them too. So uh, I like how the Angels have uh, built their team. They were, of course, in the World Series last year. Top hitters projected for the American League. Trout, uh, Brett Laurie, I just can't believe how good he is. J.D. Martinez, Hosmer, Lorenzo Cain, uh, who you may recall is a member of the Texas Rangers. Chris Sale, Tim Linscum, King Felix, Hugh Darvish, and Jared Weaver projected top five uh, for pitchers. In the National League East, it's the Braves projected to win uh, the National League East with 99 wins. They are the defending World Series champions, and they return what appears to be basically the same team that won the World Series. Cardinals are projected to win the Central. They made some huge ads this offseason. Jake McGee and Kinley Jansen slot in very nicely to that bullpen. Madison Bumgarner in that rotation. They bring back Matt Holliday. They still have guys like uh, Carpenter and Adams. They have Aaron Judge starting to develop. They have still have Molina. Really good team. Could be contention for the World Series this year. Dodgers projected to win the West, although it looks like it's going to be quite close and quite competitive. Um, the Dodgers, you know, things haven't gone quite their way throughout this save, but they get Seager and Kershaw back. Last year was pretty much a lost year for them, so we'll see what happens there with the LA Dodgers. Projected top players uh, by at least hitters in the National League. You've got the 1-2 Colorado punch of Cargo and Jose Abreu. You've got Harper, Hayward, and Goldschmidt. And you also have Story uh, among top players in the National League representing uh, Colorado as well. I, I just, he, he just, I mean, he's so, he's so good. He's so good. It's unbelievable. He's doing so well. I mean, is he going to be a Hall of Famer? Goodness gracious. Okay. Um, Clayton Kershaw, David Price, Gio Gonzalez, Jeremy Hefner, and Madison Bumgarner are projected top five among starting pitchers. We also see Bauer there. We talked a little bit of Bauer earlier. But yep, those are your preseason predictions. Will they come true? We'll just have to find out, you know. All right, we're here on May 31st, 2016. First couple months of the season are in the books, and if things continue to hold like this, this is going to be a season that really flips sort of the balance of power in this league on its head. You have a lot of new teams emerging, uh, you know, at least with some strong starts for the first 50 or so games of the season. You know, the Rays, who have uh, been like perennial champions of the East throughout this save, they're in like in last place, and the Yankees are leading with the Orioles not too far behind. Obviously, adding Felix Hernandez has been pretty helpful for that. Felix Hernandez continues to absolutely wow. Gary Sanchez, who was a, a silver slug, uh, silver slugger winner last year, he's doing really well for them. Joey Votto, who um, you know joined the Yankees a couple off seasons ago, he had 29 home runs in 2015 for them. Um, which was a nice bounce back from his 15 in 2014. He had a really good year, and now once again, 150 OPS plus, 420 on base percentage. 
this Yankees team. They still have guys like Mark Teixeira, too. So they still have Nick Swisher. So there's still some guys kicking around from, like, you know, the good old days, like the 2009-type Yankees. Um, Baltimore Orioles, too. We haven't talked about them too much, but they're only, like, a half game back from the Yankees, so I feel like we should. They have Colton Wong. They have uh, Jonathan Scope, who's doing quite well with a 128 OPS+. plus. They also have Beltre. I don't think I really realized they had Beltre. I'd kind of lost track of Beltre, but... Beltre's still there. This is his age 37 season. Um, G-Man Choi is there. He's playing first base for them. I like G-Man Choi. I did have to mess with his ratings so he wouldn't be like a catcher. Mark Trumbo's there. He joined them uh, after, um, you know, he had a pretty solid season. No, he didn't have a good season in 2015. 2014, he had a good season with the Angels, but he joined them on a minor league deal. He's in Baltimore. Yeah, I'm. you know, their third and run scored. I'm curious to see if that'll hold. Um, um, but they're first in OPS. Maybe they, maybe it will. I don't know what to make of these Orioles just yet. I feel like we need more games to be played. There's n- though, look, look, guys. The AL Central has good teams. Uh, the Kansas City Royals were projected to win it. Not one of them. They're 15 and 36. They may be on their way to a uh, first overall pick at this rate. But anyways, Twins. Um, they're technically on top by half a game. They have uh, Eddie Rosario's here. Hey, Eddie Rosario. Hey, Jorge Polanco's here. Hello, Jorge Polanco. How are you? I didn't realize uh, Jorge Blanco had a five-war season last year. Good for him. Hey, Joe Maurer. Look at Joe Maurer. He's batting 300. Please ignore the OPS+. Plus. Please ignore the OPS+. Plus. Joe Maurer's batting 300. He's great. We love Joe Maurer. Green Mercedes is here. He's playing catcher. That's kind of weird. This is kind of a weird team. Um, Sano's having a... It's not a bad year, but he's, he's, he's been slow to heat up. But you know what? Good pitching. Matt Garza has been really good for them. Tanaka's been really good for them. And Tim Lincecum. Here's the thing about Tim Lincecum, guys. Tim Lincecum right now, he needs volume. You know what I mean? He had the peak. He has the Cy Young Awards. If we want to see Tim Lincecum make the Hall of Fame, he needs the volume. And, and what he's done in Minnesota is just, uh, you know, be a slightly above average pitcher every year. And he just doesn't miss starts. And that's been so key. His health has been really, really good. I feel like I should knock on wood as I say this, but um, the freak is staying healthy. And that's been fun to see because, of course, Lynn's become one of my absolute favorite players. And Matt Thornton, their closer, is an absolute G. I mean, he's only thrown 20 innings this year, 18 appearances, but he already has 12 saves. He does not like to strike guys out. But, I mean, his ERA plus is is over a thousand and you know this isn't even really all that fluky because he was really good in 2015 and 2014 as well so that's a look at the twins the tigers as they moved on from prince fielder and miguel cabrera guess what they're still good josh johnson rick porcello max scherzer justin verlander although interesting interestingly enough scherzer and verlander seem to have settled more into being like slightly above average starting pitchers in this league rather than like sort of like world-class pitchers in this league um you know Scherzer's 31 now uh Verlander's 33 so I'm not sure if too much is going to develop there but Porcello's having a really really good year his ERA plus is 159 his ERA is below three and then Josh Johnson honestly Josh Johnson might have might be like the best Detroit Tigers pitcher in this save which feels weird to say but I really want to hone in here on the Houston Astros. Um, oh my goodness, because out of nowhere, they're in first place leading the uh, AL West at the moment. We have not talked a lot of Jose Altuve, but here he is. Here's what his career has looked like. 2015, not a very good year for him. But 2016, looks like he's on pace to be an all-star. He's batting 359 on pace for an eight-war season. So here comes Jose Altuve. Aaron Nola um, was drafted by them. Second overall in that 2013 first-year player draft. He led the league in losses in 2015, but he wasn't really too bad. Um, Still an ERA over four, but he has a lot of potential to be great for them. Um, But yeah, they're fifth in runs scored. They are fourth in runs against. Um, Chris Bryant, we haven't talked about too much. He, uh, honestly, ever since like his like rookie year has just kind of gotten worse, which is a a really weird trend because his rookie year was when he was like 21 or something like that. Um, but yeah, really good bullpen on the uh, Houston Astros. Look at look at David Rosenblum, Rose Rose Boom, who is uh, you know ERA around two. He has uh, five saves on the season. Could be a guy that strikes out like a hundred, uh, you know, out of the bullpen. Um, Jason Stoffel, Matt Albers. This is a really good bullpen for the Astros. If they win the division, it's gonna be on the strength of their bullpen. Nationals lead the East. They have some guys I've never heard of. I don't know who Miles Hamblin is. I don't know who Corey Brown is, but. Um, they have Ian Desmond playing really well at the moment. And of course, just the, I mean, this part of their lineup is just so scary. LaRoche, Souza, Harper, Rendon. 
it's crazy. It's crazy. And you know what? Strasburg, Gio Gonzalez, Anibal Sanchez, Jordan Zimmerman, really strong in terms of their um, rotation as well. This guy, Ivan uh, Pinero, has been like a top 100 prospect at times. Looks like he tore flexor tendon in his elbow. So that's a big time injury. Tyler Clippard, Frank Duncan, and Herman Marquez, who's one of the top prospects in the game at the moment. Looks like he's doing pretty well uh, out of the pen. I would not be surprised if he uh, started some games this year as well. He projects to be a starter long term. Reds lead the NL Central. Matt Latos, it's the pitching. It's always the pitching. Reds have had such good pitching throughout this save, and they just have to piece it together as far as their hitting goes. But look at Miguel Cabrera. Look at Miguel, Look how Miguel Cabrera is doing so far. Oh my goodness. I mean, this is just a massive year um, in his first year with Cincinnati. I'm sure he's liking the move to like more of a hitter-friendly park, um, no longer in Detroit. But it's the Diamondbacks with the best record. Diamondbacks with the best record in the uh, in the whole league right now. They're 36 and 17. This has always been a good team. They've won a World Series already in this save. And you look at them. They've got Eaton going strong. Johan Camargo is their second baseman. That's interesting. That's because of an injury to Aaron Hill. Um, David Wright continues to wow. I mean, what if David Wright wins an MVP? That's the type of start to a season he's having. Justin Upton's there. Paul Goldschmidt's there. Bauer's got a 3.76 ERA, but my goodness, Jeff Samarja, um, who's been splitting time between the rotation and uh, uh, the bullpen, and through his first 41 innings, his ERA is below one. So that's Arizona Diamondbacks. I probably spent way too much time on that than I needed to, but it's good to just sort of intro and see who's off to a hot start so far this season. McCutcheon leads batting average. I haven't said McCutcheon's name in a while, but he's off to an extremely strong start. Uh, still a member of the Pittsburgh Pirates at the moment. And actually, wow, Pujols uh, batting 374. So Pujols, Cabrera, change of scenery, having amazing seasons. This is really fun to watch. I mean, look at Pujols go. Um, amazing start to the season. He was an all-star last year too, so his fortunes have uh, you know been really good recently. Trout leads homers. Pujols leads on base percentage. Cabrera leads slug and OPS. Trout leads war. Wow, awesome to see. Um, ERA leader at the moment, Chris Sale with the sub two ERA. We thought, you know, last year he had a season that was Cy Young quality. It just didn't quite happen for him because Felix was so good. Ricky Nolasco's had some ups and some downs, but right now he's up. His ERA is immense. Um, But, you know, 2015 was not a great year for Ricky Nolasco. But even 2012, like the first year we simulated, he was pretty dominant. So he's been up and down. Now he's having a great year. Kershaw leads war, which I just love to see. His fit must be something absolutely wild right now. I mean, he has 107 strikeouts, 7 walks, and 5 homers allowed. Would love to see him grab a Cy Young. He's back from that injury. It's great to see. He also leads strikeouts. And Jonathan Broxton is the closer for the Reds, and uh, he leads saves with 16. So those are your league leaders at the moment. That's how the season's rolling along, and uh, I will see you guys at the All-Star break. We're here at the All-Star break. I thought it'd be nice just to do a little injury update diagnosis type thing you know injuries aren't fun but they are important they can affect the long-term development of players in this game and so DeGrom has an injury but it's really not bad I would not be freaked out about that at all Um, he's set to return in a day what is unfortunate is that he's just yeah things haven't really gone his way this year his movement is still a 45 on the 20 to 80 scale so he's allowed quite a few home runs 16 and 63 innings and his ERA is about six so unfortunate for DeGrom what's really unfortunate for the Phillies is Cole Hamm because not only is Cole Hamels torn his UCL going to need, you know, Tommy John surgery, I imagine. Um, Cole Hamels, they just signed him to like a really, really big contract extension. Um, five years, $132 million. So granted that last year's with a vesting option, but it sucks to sign a guy to, a, uh, you know, a big contract like that, a veteran reliable pitcher, and that happens. But that's part of the game. The other big pitching injury is to Jared Weaver. Ruptured disc in his back, which he suffered um, back in June, late June. He, this is tough for the Angels. He, he's their ace, and as they battle against the Astros to try to win this uh, AL West, that is a huge loss for the Angels. But yeah, no, no real notable injuries as far as like the top hitters in the league go. This David Dahl injury is like it's just a hamstring thing. So this Mike Trout thing is just like, ooh, he does have a day to day injury, but he can still play through it. But yeah, hopefully it doesn't turn into anything worse for Mr. Trout. But uh, so far, that's where we're at injury-wise. The main ones, you know, uh, Jared Weaver, unfortunate to see. And uh, the other big injury, of course, to Cole Hamels. That that really stinks for the Phillies. They've had a rough go at it um, throughout this simulation. 
Not a lot of movement in the standings so far. The Yankees have opened up a, a pretty big lead in that AL East. They, of course, had a really big offseason. They added King Felix. We haven't talked much in terms of the Blue Jays. Obviously, Brett Loy's a freak, um, but they have Jorge Soler. They have Tyler Colvin, who's uh, actually put together a couple of really nice seasons in this save. I wonder if he could be like maybe an all-star. Eh, probably not. Uh, but Brett Laurie, definitely, I mean, just an absolute stud. I keep saying it's like he's like Manny Machado or something. It's crazy what he's become. Um, they have Jack Flaherty, um, who they picked uh, fourth overall in that 2014 first-year player draft. It hasn't gone great for him in the majors yet, um, but they do have Jack Flaherty, and they're second. So uh, that's something. Once again, between uh, the Tigers and the Twins in the Central, it looks like it's just going to be just a dogfight between these two. Angels and Astros, you know, not much distance between them. Um, we've looked at the Astros already. We looked at the Angels some, too. Washington Nationals still with a one-game lead over the Braves. Mets are up there, too. Mets have uh, really suffered from some really strong teams in their division. The Nationals and the Braves have turned in some really strong performances, so it's been tough for them to sniff the playoffs, but they're 53-42. and 42. They could be in line for a wild card spot. Wilmer Flores is hitting really well for them. Um, they have Daniel Murphy. They have Dick Markakis. They have Pollock, who they acquired in that John Neese trade. And for them, it's going to come down to their pitching, right? Hefner continues to pitch really, really well. Harvey's there. Patrick Corbin's there. Danny Salazar, Colin McHugh. Like, they have the pitching to deal with the fact that they have certain guys, you know, like DeGrom, not doing so well. So let's see what the Mets do this year. Reds have opened up an eight-game lead in the Central. Diamondbacks have opened an 11-and-a-half game lead. They're looking pretty, pretty dominant in that NL West. But uh, Rockies and Dodgers definitely in contention for a, a wild card spot. So it's a strong division, but the Diamondbacks, they have the best record in Major League Baseball. Here are your stat leaders at the All-Star break. Carlos Gonzalez leads batting average, and really it's just a trio of Colorado Rockies leading batting average. Cargo, Trevor Story, Charlie Blackman, followed by Trout, Votto, and Hunter Dozier on the New York Yankees. Wow, look at Hunter Dozier go. He's having an absolutely monster season for the New York Yankees. I haven't really talked about him much, but he's been really, really good for them after he was picked uh, 14th overall in that uh, first-year player draft. Or maybe this was like a regular draft. I don't know, but Hunter Dozier's going... He's going pretty darn crazy for the Yankees, and it's interesting because actually in like 2021, he was one of the worst full-time players in MLB. Um, not to rub that in his face, but it's good to see him doing well. Miguel Cabrera leads home runs. He's tied with Trout, technically. He also leads RBI. Joey Votto leads on base percentage. It feels like, sometimes it feels like, you know, the more things change, the more things stay the same. Because look, here we are. Votto's leading on base. Cabrera's leading a bunch of offensive stuff. Trout's leading a bunch of offensive statistics. He leads war as well. He has at least one more war than everyone in the league. He may be on his way to an MVP. Inter and Ciarte leads stolen bases. So that's your update as far as offense goes. Pitching leaders. Best ERA belongs to Clayton Kershaw. I think Clayton Kershaw could be on his way to a Cy Young Award here. I mean, he's been absolutely dominant. He's on pace for 11.4 war. Goodness gracious, Clayton Kershaw going absolutely ballistic. Madison Bumgarner also doing extremely well. Um, this is his first year with the St. Louis Cardinals, so there's some really strong pitching performances in that National League. Steven Strasburg. And then here's Chris Sale. Can Chris Sale quest and get his Cy Young Award win? You know there's going to be someone standing in his way, and that someone is definitely going to be Felix Hernandez. My goodness, it's just, it's just, it's, it's, it's a joke how good he is. Um, and then uh, James Paxton, too, um, of the Seattle Mariners, he's kind of that replacement de facto ace now for that Mariners rotation. Also a World Series champion in 2013. Uh, as far as uh, war goes, it's Kershaw, Strasburg, King Felix, Medlin, Bauer, and Price. Kershaw leads strikeouts by 18. He has a really strong lead there. And then this guy, Kyle Barch of the Cleveland Spiders, he has 25 saves, um, as does Broxton, the uh, aforementioned uh, Jonathan Broxton of the Cincinnati Reds. So, yep, there's your stat leaders. Um, yeah, Clayton Kershaw, really good at baseball. Mike Trout, really good at baseball. Miguel Cabrera, really good at baseball. We've had some fun surprises, but we've also had some things that we definitely expected. Of course, all-star game rosters are here, and Chris Sale's going to get himself a start. As far as the American League starting pitchers, it's a lot of the usual suspects. Garza, Hernandez, Josh Johnson, Jared Parker, Paxton is maybe the newest, freshest face to this all-star lineup, and Tanaka. Among the relievers, hey, guess what, guys? Kelvin Herrera is having a really good year. Brian Morris is having a really good year. These guys have been great throughout this save. 
Um, Gary Sanchez is an all-star. Jan Gomes is an all-star. But Jason Castro of the Houston Astros, having, I like that, has a very nice season so far. 120 OPS plus on pace for four war. And he's actually going to get the start at catcher for the American League. Edwin Encarnacion having another really good year. He continues to slug. He had a really bad 2014, but 2015 and 2016 have been very nice. Pujols getting the start at first base. Carlos Santana is also there of the Spiders. And here's Votto. Man, Love to see it. Hey, Marcus Simeon is an all-star for the Chicago White Sox. He's having a phenomenal season so far. He's been good in 2015 and uh, 2014, but 2016 right now, a breakout, an all-star, um, and the starting for a uh, second baseman. Uh, Zobrist, also an all-star. This is his age 35 season. He's been in Tampa this whole time. Josh Donaldson, same thing every year, Josh Donaldson, isn't it? Same old, same old with you. I mean, maybe you'll get 6.1 more this year instead of your usual like 5.8, but yep, that's Josh Donaldson for you. He's just kind of doing his thing. Asin Russell, also an all-star. He starts at shortstop. Uh, both Oakland uh, A's. There's Hunter Dozier. That's crazy. Joey Gallo's back. He has 24 homers. And then the outfield, Alex Gordon. Josh Hamilton makes himself an all-star game. He's made quite a few all-star games uh, throughout this save. This is the third one uh, because he made 2012, 2014, 2016. He's kind of like an even years type of guy. Um, Maybe he should play for the Giants. But there's uh, Josh Hamilton on pace for 41 home runs this year. Trout's an all-star, obviously. Ben Intendi's an all-star once again. Oh, let's look at the Trout injury. It's still just, it's day-to-day. He's playing through it. Hopefully it just doesn't exacerbate into a, a worse injury for him. Kershaw is going to start the All-Star game for the National League. Jeff Samarja, we talked about him. He's an All-Star. And here's a new face, Cameron Smith. Cameron Smith, a 23-year-old starting pitcher for the Pittsburgh Pirates. He's only started 10 games on the year, but he has a 2.88 ERA. Looks like he's going to be their representative in the All-Star game. Way to go, Cameron Smith. Um, relievers, Jance is an all-star and based mostly on reputation. His ERA is, uh, you know, just around four. Uh, Kimbrell's having a great year. Uh, Posey gets the start at catcher. He's like not so fast, Real Mudo. Not so fast, uh, Yasmani Grandal, who's not even an all-star this year. That honor goes to Will and Rosario of the Rockies. Cabrera's an all-star. Um, oh my goodness, it's just, it's it's a joke, Ramos Ramirez. Or Aramis. I, don't, I can't remember if it's, I'm pretty sure it's a Ramos. I'm pretty sure it's Ramos Ramirez. I feel like sometimes when he was playing, they would say Aramis, but I'm pretty sure it's Ramos Ramirez. Uh, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. I mean, the Brewers have struck gold here. I mean, this guy, again, he was always underrated when he played, but wow. I mean, this is, he's 2,500 hits. He's 63 war. This could be a Hall of Famer. Uh, okay, so he's doing great. He's in a, and it's another all star for him. Baez is an all star. David Wright is once again an all star. Um, that's his first all star game since 2013. He, you know, if he, he could be MVP candidate, he could be MVP candidate for those dominant Arizona Diamondbacks so far. Bregman's an all-star. He's up to like a five-star rating, so that's huge. Um, good for the Padres to get him. Uh, Carlos Quentin's an all-star. Blackman, Jason Hayward is doing Jason Hayward things. McCutcheon's an all-star. This is his first all-star game since 2012. That's fun to see. Love McCutcheon. It's not like he's been bad, but... Honestly, uh, he hasn't been quite as good in the safe so far as he has been in real life. Um, he did have that 2012 that was absolutely monster, though. So I uh, got to respect that at least. But yep, that's Andrew McCutcheon. And those are your all-star game rosters. So I'll check in with you guys at the trade deadline, see if there's been interesting movement in the trade market. Okay, we are here at the trade deadline. There's a few trades that have gone down this season that I'd like to talk about. This first one actually happened in late May. It's a trade between the Angels and the Pirates that sent Howie Kendrick to Pittsburgh in exchange for Junior Guerra. The uh, Pirates grabbed uh, Howie Kendrick, and it looks like he's been playing pretty well for them. He has an 819 OPS and 122 OPS plus, so they might have done well for themselves by buying low on Howie Kendrick. Looks like he's currently penciled in as their second baseman and batting second. However, the Pirates still 10 games back of the Reds, not really in wildcard contention. Meanwhile, Junior Guerra, you know, again, he's doing a little bit better with the uh, Angels than he was with the Pirates, so this could be a win-win trade for both. Where it stands for the Angels right now is that they're actually tied with the Astros in that uh, AL West division race. There's a trade right here between Houston and St. Louis, where they basically just swapped two pretty good relievers. Um, The Astros acquired Sean Marshall from St. Louis. Um, Sean Marshall had also been pitching in Cincinnati earlier in this save. Um, but yeah, Sean Marshall now on the Astros. He's 33. And in return, um, the Cardinals received David Roseboom, who I think we've looked at before. David Roseboom, 
pretty good young reliever. He had a really good 2016, or he's played well this year, you know, with the Astros, gone over to the uh, Cardinals now, and um, also involved in this trade. Uh, Bruce Dark Gratterall, who doesn't look like he has super great ratings by any means, and Jake Cosart. And then uh, probably the biggest trade just happened a few days before the deadline. Um, it's Milwaukee trading Ramis Ramirez to Minnesota. And uh, Ramirez has a concussion right now that stated day he might be playing through it to some extent. But, I mean, Ramis Ramirez in the save, unbelievable. Like, having a really, really good season this year with uh, Milwaukee in 100 games. Again, OPS of 879. He's worth three war. He's, I mean, he's just... You know, his late career has been so beastly. He's kind of doing the Adrian Beltre thing where it's like, you know, he was a good player, you know, up until he was like 30, 31, 32. But it's this longevity and it's this this ability to produce, um, you know, at older ages that is turning him, it appears to be, into a Hall of Famer. I mean, 432 home runs, 2,500 hits, up to 63 war now, career 127 OPS+. plus. Some really impressive stuff from Ramos Ramirez, who still keeps going. The Twins, they are in an absolute dogfight with those Detroit Tigers. That's going to be a fun race to see how you know that ends up. So yeah, those are your three big trades. Here's just a glimpse at the standings right now, but I will see you guys on the last day of the regular season. Last day of the regular season here. Playoff picture mostly set, although it really comes down here to this NL Central. There's one more game left to be played by these teams, so if the Cubs win their final game of the season and the Reds lose their final game of the season, there will be a game 163 to decide who wins the NL Central, and the loser of that won't even be qualified for the playoffs because this has been a fairly weak division. Looks like the Cubs will face off against the Brewers with Granke on the mound, and the Reds will face off against the Pirates with Jeff Locke on the mound. So let's go ahead and just sim through this day, see who comes out on top. Okay, Reds win, and um, Cubs also win. So it uh, looks like the Reds advance, or maybe they both lost. Can't quite tell. Yeah, they both lost. Okay, so um, either way, Reds are your NL Central champions, and with that, the entire playoff picture is set. The Yankees won the AL East. They led that for most of the year. The Tigers come out on top over the Twins, but the Twins grab a wild card spot, both coming out of that AL Central. Astros win the West. Angels grab a wild card spot. Mike Trout had a really big gear. I'm excited to talk about that. Uh, in the NL East, the Nationals won. The Mets grab a wild card spot, and the Braves miss out on a wild card spot. Keep in mind they were the defending champs. Reds advance in the Central, and in the West, it's those those Arizona Diamondbacks. Man, they they won 104 games. Really strong team throughout this save. Dodgers do grab a wild card spot. We are definitely rooting for them in the playoffs. Rockies just missed out. It's a shame because they've got a pretty good team too. Giants at 77 and 85. It it may be time to start the rebuild. You know, this may be time for them to sort of uh, retool, having lost Bumgarner now. So it'll be interesting to see what happens with them long-term. But yep, that's the playoff picture. And now we can check out the stat leaders. Who led all the stats in 2016? So here are your stat leaders for the 2016 season. Looks like it's going to be another batting title for Cargo, Carlos Gonzalez, as he hits 354. It That is assisted by the ballpark, no doubt, but he's also one of the top players in the league. Trevor Story finishes second, Holiday third. Mike Trout uh, is going to win the uh, batting title in the American League with the 330. That's the highest in the American League. McCutcheon, good to see him have a good year. And Hunter Dozier, wow, I mean, Hunter Dozier continues to impress. Miguel Cabrera, 53 home runs. What an enormous season for Miguel Cabrera. I was a little bit worried about him. He was on that downward trend, 2012, 2013, 2014, kind of bottomed out here. Even then, that was like a 130 OPS plus in about a four-war season. But now he's climbing back up, and now he's once again back into, you know, possibly being the MVP of the National League. I mean, the Reds, there's no way the Reds would have won the division without help from Miguel Cabrera. There's absolutely no way. He was instrumental for them. That was a huge signing. And uh, so, yeah, Miguel Cabrera, Reds legend. Um, Mike Trout leads OPS, enormous year. Um, leads, the, yeah, leads, leads the league in OPS, hits 47 home runs, bats 330, 9.6 war. That's his highest war total he's put up so far. I said I was looking for like a like a 10 war Mike Trout season. We basically got it here. This may be, uh, how many MVPs would this be in a row? This could be number three in a row for Michael Trout. Uh, Miguel Cabrera does lead slugging. Votto is your on-base percentage king once again. He's pretty much done that every year except for 2015. And um, this is probably his best year in the Yankees uniform so far. Another 100-walk season. Good year for Joey Votto. He is, how old is Joey Votto right now? 33. Okay, so he's still got a ways to go. 
Uh, let's see here. Stolen base leader, Ender and Ciarte, actually tied with Jonathan VR. Uh, I was interested to see AJ Pollock with uh, 52 doubles. He was, of course, acquired in that. What's kind of been a win-win trade, it seems like, between the Mets and the Diamondbacks. You know, uh, Pollock's a good pickup. Let's see how Patrick Corbin did this year um, because he was the other key piece of that trade. And, of course, John Neese helped them out quite a bit. Patrick Corbin looks like had a pretty good year, 3.67 ERA and 188 innings pitched, 33 games started. So that's been one of the more consequential traits for sure. Trout leads OPS+. Plus. Uh, let's move on here to the pitching leaders. Kershaw comes through. Looks like Kershaw's going to win himself uh, a Cy Young Award. Could very well be unanimous. We're talking about, you know, a triple crown here. He leads strikeouts. He leads wins. He leads ERA. 10.8 F4. Best year of his career. And no doubt adding another Cy Young Award, uh, which will probably be his first since 2012. So I'm thinking he's winning the Cy Young. Bumgarner had a really good year with the Cardinals. He's, I believe, no, he's not the defending Cy Young, um, he, but he did win in 2014. Chris Sale coming through with another really fine season. wonder if he'll win a Cy Young award in that American League. That would be interesting to see. Tanaka, great season. Jeff Smarge, a great season. We saw he had just a terrific start to the year, although, granted, 25 games started, but also made 20 appearances out of the bullpen. That's how good those Arizona Diamondbacks are when they can put a guy like that in the bullpen. And King Felix... Still going strong. It's his weakest season so far of the simulation, but that, that almost feels silly to say because he still led the league in innings pitched, 2.7 ERA, 170 ERA plus, 6.3 war. Here's a look at Felix Hernandez's career stats. Uh, he is 30, and he has 75 career war. He has 2,500 innings pitched and 2,400 strikeouts. Basically, if he retires today, he's probably a Hall of Famer. At least by war, he is a Hall of Famer. Um, might need to add you know, a little bit more to those counting stats. But yep, yeah, Kelvin Herrera, uh, he led saves. It was another great year for him. He's just been wonderful to watch throughout this entire simulation. Terrific player. Here's this guy, Cable Hogbin. Quite the name. He's an Australian, it appears. Uh, 4.04 ERA, but he did have 36 saves for the Orioles. Kyle Barch. Brian Morris, there's Brian Morris. Wow, another great year for Brian Morris. What's Brian Morris's like career stats uh, at the moment? Okay, because we've had him from 2012 onwards. Looks like he actually pitched his first season with the Pirates, interestingly enough. But this is a guy with the career 2.35 ERA. What was this trade that the Pirates made to relinquish such a powerful reliever? They tra- Okay, this is fun. Um, Oakland received Brian Morris, but Pittsburgh received Derek Norris. And did Derek Norris even play for them? Nope. The Pirates then traded Derek Norris, followed the followed the trail, you know, and um, Pittsburgh received Jerry Blevins. Okay, so Jerry Blevins is responsible for the guy who's one of the absolute top relievers in this safe. So shout outs to all the Blevins heads. Um, I've completely lost track of where I am. Oh yeah, looking at stat leaders, um, Kershaw, he led all the war. Strikeout leaders... Kershaw, Strasburg, Sale, James Paxton, who's been kind of taken over for Felix as the ace of that Seattle staff, Madison Bumgarner, and David Price. Another good year for David Price in the Cubs uniform. He has been very, very strong throughout this save as well. Um, he's up to 41 career war. He has a career 2.89 ERA, and he uh, just turned 31 in August. So that's a look at your uh, leaders among all the stat categories. Now let's move on and see who will come out on top in the 2016 playoffs. We're going to begin with a wild card round. Minnesota Twins versus Los Angeles Angels in the American League. Mets versus Dodgers in the National League. Let's see who comes out on top. Angels win and Dodgers win. So they advance to face um, Arizona and New York, respectively, in these uh, division series, best of five series. It's going to be interesting to see what Houston does. I believe this is their first postseason appearance in this save. We should talk about a bit about Houston. Jonathan VR, of course, led the league in stolen bases, or he's tied for the um, league lead. Altuve, we talked about him a little bit. He started to emerge a bit in this save. He had a pretty good uh, 2016. I thought he was going to be an all-star, honestly. Uh, interesting that he's the second baseman in VR. Or, sorry, he's the DH in VR's second baseman. You have J.D. Martinez. They have Eric Castro. This guy was uh, almost one rookie of the year in his first season. Domingo Santana's there. Chris Bryant, does he bounce back? Not really. Chris Bryant's been a really weird player in this save, I would have to say. His his best year was his first year, and it's just been a, a bit of a decline, precipitous decline ever since then. 
Yeah, and then they have George Springer, and they also have Correa up. Correa, this was um, Correa's rookie season. Wasn't a great rookie season, but um, I'm a little impressed that this team won 92 games. I'll just put it that way. I'm a little impressed they won 92 games. Um, Detroit's their opponent. Angels face the Yankees. Dodgers face the D-backs, and Reds face the Nationals. Of course, those Reds led by Miguel Cabrera. He is no doubt the MVP, although they have had good pitching throughout this save. All right. Let's see how these division series go, and we'll check in with the winners. Astros up 2-1, Yankees up 2-1, Nationals up 2-0. Astros are the first team to advance while they move on to the championship series. So let's see who will join them. Angels. So it'll be Astros versus Angels in that championship series. Uh, Angels beat the Yankees in five, and we have some game fives over here in the National League. Diamondbacks advance, and Nationals advance. So let's meet the top four teams. We've met the Astros a bit already, but let's talk about these Angels coming out of that wild card spot. Mike Trout, of course, had an enormous year. He's still day to day with that uh, strained groin, but thankfully he has one day left of that. Um, and I guess his concussion was done too. I think that's what he had before. I don't know who John Kemmer is, but he had a very, very good season for the Los Angeles Angels. He was acquired via trade um, in January 2014. I didn't cover that trade because I didn't really know too much about John Kemmer. Mike Moustakis has been a monster player in this save. It was so big that the Angels picked him up. He's been a, a total game changer for them, I think. He had 41 home runs this year, 7.7 more. They have Stalling Marte. They have Trey Turner. This is a really good team. Trey Turner was picked six overall in that 2013 first-year player draft. This was his first uh, you know, full year in the majors, I would say, and he, he performed very, very well in 100 games. He hit 291. He uh, stole only 11 bases. He could maybe bump that up a little bit. 1.9 more. That's a really good debut for Trey Turner. And then um, their rotation, James Shields, Junior Garrett, Garrett Richards, Max Russell. It's not the greatest, but they have some injuries. Like They managed to do this without Jared Weaver for the like their entire second half. He's their ace for sure. And then no C.J. Wilson either, partially torn labrum. So if the Angels win, you know they win with some injuries in their rotation for sure. Diamondbacks. I mean, this is the 104 win Diamondbacks. They won the World Series a couple years ago. David Wright is probably uh, the most interesting character here. Looks like he led the National League in war, so we'll see. I mean, it seems like Cabrera's got it, but David Wright could be in that MVP discussion. 153 OPS plus, 35 home runs. At the age of 33, here's his career stats up to a 69. Nice war. Over 2,000 hits now. Yeah, it seems like he's on his way to a Hall of Fame career. Paul Goldschmidt's there. This was probably Paul Goldschmidt's best season in the simulation so far. Gerardo Parra is still there. I thought he was gone for some reason. Uh, Aaron Hills, this is pretty much still the core that you're used to seeing. I was going to say I don't see Upton, but Upton uh, appears injured. Um, still a really good rotation, even though they have no Bauer. They have no Trevor Cahill. Their pitching is just so deep. Now they have John Neese, Wade Miley, Jeff Smarja, and Tyler Skaggs joins the playoff rotation. He only started 10 games this year. He had 32 appearances out of the bullpen, but I would love to see Tyler Skaggs succeed um, in the playoffs. He already has a World Series ring. Maybe he'll add another one. And here's the Washington Nationals, champions of the East. Uh, I don't know too much about this. Uh, well, I have Desmond Jennings leading off. I think this guy played for the Rays. Yeah, okay. I kind of vaguely remember him with the race. Um, but yeah, he's their leadoff hitter. Not the greatest of leadoff hitters, it appears. Uh, Adam LaRoche, Steven Souza, I mean, just a monster, monster year. Not as good as his 2015, but still he had 44 home runs. Goodness gracious. They have Harper. Harper, another great year for Harper. He's been one of the better players in this save. Rendon, kind of a down year for Rendon, but it uh, doesn't really matter. This is still a really stacked team. Strasburg, Gio Gonzalez, Jordan Zimmerman, Anibal Sanchez. Um, they also have Charlie Morton in their bullpen. It looks like he has a torn UCL. Uh, oh, and Herman Marquez, who is one of the uh, top prospects, he's been pitching out of the bullpen, and he's been a monster for them out of the bullpen. I imagine he will start the season in the rotation next year, but he's been a very good bullpen piece, kind of reminiscent of like when Chris Sale was pitching out of the bullpen. So Astros take a 2-0 lead on the Angels. Nationals taking a lead on the Diamondbacks, so both these teams up 2 nothing. It could be Houston versus uh, Washington. We'll see. Houston is just, man, they're just plucking along. You know, they're up 3 nothing on the Angels. Meanwhile, the Nationals are up 3-0 while the Astros advance. Wow. So a sweep of the Los Angeles Angels by the Houston Astros. They assert their dominance. They show why they were the division champion and the Angels a wildcard team. Meanwhile, in that NLCS, Diamondbacks do win a game. 
but it's the Nationals who advance to the World Series. So here we go. Astros versus Nationals in the World Series. I feel like we've met these teams enough. Here's one last glimpse at the Astros. This is kind of a ragtag team. I mean, I know they're third in runs scored, um, but, I, you know, they're seventh in starters ERA. Their bullpen is definitely a strength, though. They added Sean Marshall. Um, you know, Jason Stoffel's been pretty good. They have some guys, Matt Albers, um, Pedro Strope, David Carpenter's in their bullpen. That's kind of interesting. So, yeah, we'll see what happens here. I, I, I have a feeling it's going to be the Nationals. The fact that they beat Arizona so convincingly is, is really impressive because Arizona won 104 games. We'll see. Game one goes to Houston. I mean, Houston's only lost one playoff game this entire run so far. Game two goes to Washington. Game three, Houston. They're up 2-1. Game four, Washington. Okay, trading blows. Ooh, game five. Washington wins game five. And so we get a travel day. And then so last two games of the series, can Houston force a game seven? Yes, they can. Okay, wow. I feel like we've had a lot of game sevens here. So here we are for all the marbles. Game seven of the 2016 World Series. Your winner is... The Washington Nationals. Washington Nationals defeat the Houston Astros in seven games. Let's see what happened in that series. Oh, wow. Incredible. So in game six, you had like every... Wow. This... Wow. Okay, we got to talk about these last couple games here. Because in game six, with Houston facing elimination, they come in to the bottom of the ninth inning and they're down 10 to 7 and they score four runs i mean imagine the championship win probability uh it ends with domingo santana hits a two-run home run off herman marquez wow i mean just that's absolutely incredible stuff from the astros it's amazing that they even forced a game seven um marquez must have felt so bad when that happened but yeah domingo santana hit a huge home run um they also there was a uh, a grand slam in the top of the eighth by the Washington Nationals from, it looks like, David Peralta. I'm not sure if I've talked about David Peralta much, but he is a Washington National. So that was to force Game 7. And then what happened here in Game 7? Pitcher's duel, and in the eighth inning, the Washington Nationals score on a Ian Desmond solo home run versus Sean Marshall. And that was the only run scored uh, in this game. Two hits for the Nationals in their uh, win, their winning game seven. And the Astros only had four hits. Uh, Gio Gonzalez pitched a great game. And then they handed it off to Nate Carnes, Tyler Clippard, Anibal Sanchez, and Dario Agrasales, who closed it out. Meanwhile, Jordan Lyles, yeah, you got to feel for him. Seven innings pitched, seven strikeouts, one hit allowed. Marshall allows the home run, and then Brett Cecil, um, you know, pitches a great top of the ninth. It's just, it just wasn't enough. So that would have been like kind of a classic World Series for sure. All these games, this was another one-run game here in Game 5 between the Nationals and the Astros. Your series MVP is going to be Jonathan Villar. So Jonathan Villar on the losing team, we've seen that uh, a couple times, I think, but Villar had a huge series. He had three home runs. His OPS was like 1,500, 1,600. Meanwhile, over here on the Washington Nationals, looks like LaRoche hit four home runs. So if you're if you're giving the Nationals an, you know, an MVP award, maybe that goes to Adam LaRoche. Um, looks like Steven Strasburg did really well. He had a 1.42 ERA. Uh, Joe Gonzalez also did really well. He had a .79 ERA. They, they each had two games started. Nate Carnes had two wins late. So there you go. That's your 2016 World Series. Um, kind of a classic, just like the real 2016 World Series was. So congratulations to the Washington Nationals. And now we can move on to the offseason. The offseason begins with award season. So we'll do that and follow that up with the first year player draft. Batting title for Mike Trout. I think that's his first of his career. Uh, batting title for Cargo. Definitely not his first. I feel like he's won a couple of them at least. But yes, Cargo and Mike Trout, they win batting titles. Let's move on here to the Gold Glove Awards in the American League. Matt Wieters, I think it's just pretty much dominated the save in terms of that category. This is his sixth Gold Glove in a row at catcher. Will Myers, he's won before. Chris Taylor's won before. Brett Laurie, unbelievable. I'm not sure, has Addison Russell won one? Yeah, he won one in 2013. Uh, he's playing for the Oakland Athletics. Aaron Hicks wins one for left field. That's his second in a row. Mike Trout wins in center field. He has three gold gloves in this save. So the save has really liked his defense. And Jay Bruce wins in right field. He's he's starting to get a little bit perennial there too. This might be his third in a row. Uh, fourth in a row. So there you go. A lot of repeats on the gold gloves, I notice. Steven Strasburg. Uh, oh, by the way. Oh, here's some injury news. Steven Strasburg looks like during the playoffs suffered a torn labrum in his shoulder. Um, so he's going to be out eight to nine months. 
at least he has the offseason to recover, but that's a pretty major injury to a pretty major pitcher. Goodness gracious, Steven Strasburg had a 2.75 ERA, struck out 264 guys, 9.6 F4 for Steven Strasburg. That's a lot of F4, my guy, and also a gold glove winner. Yadier Molina wins again. Uh, this is going to be his 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. We're looking at 9 in a row, I think. At least his ninth in his career. Brandon Bell wins. Nick Ahmed wins at second base. Braves also have Andrelton Simmons. Um, Nolan Arenado wins at third base. We've talked about him some. Batting might be coming along a little bit. He had a 116 OPS plus season, four war. Probably his best season so far in the league. Of course, the glove has always been there for them. Uh, Brendan Ryan wins one. He's won a lot. A.J. Pollock wins one in left field. This is his first Gold Glove award. He had a good season for the Mets this year. Jason Hayward wins in center. That's his second. He also won in 2012 for right field. Good season for Hayward, although not quite as good as some of the other ones we've seen. But still, I mean, it's a six-war season. It feels hard to criticize a six-war season. John Carlo had a down year, but this was his third straight Gold Glove in right field. Still a 111 OPS plus, uh, 3.7 war. Even when he's bad, he's still pretty good. Best American League reliever, yep, there we go, Brian Morris, once again, what a beast, he won in 2014, he wins again in 2016, 1.37 ERA on the year, 35 saves, second place is Drew Smiley on the Detroit Tigers, who looks like he was kind of like a bulky relief guy, he had 23 saves, he had 65 appearances, four of them were game started though, 93 innings pitched, so... You know, he's more, is a different style of reliever. Um, Kelvin Herrera is up there as well. He's great. Sergio Romo's been really good too. He had a 1.67 ERA. Wow, pretty darn good. Best National League reliever, Craig, Craig Kimbrell, unanimous. 100 strikeouts, 58 innings, 2.16 ERA. I mean, what more do you want from this guy? Darren O'Day on the Mets also had a really good year. Uh, Javier Solano, I think this is the first time I've said Javier Solano's name, 67 innings pitched, 3 ERA, 23 saves, Marquez, oh, Marquez, who kind of blew that game 6, but he's a World Series champion, I imagine he starts next year, he's looking like he could turn into one of the better starters in the league, Jonathan Broxton, AJ Ramos, let's look at the uh, Platinum Stick winners, which is really the Silver Slugger Awards, you can change the name of this award in game, but I've just been too lazy to do it, apparently, Gary Sanchez grabs himself another Silver Slugger. That's his second. He also won in 2015. Edwin Encarnacion. I feel like I haven't talked about Edwin Encarnacion much, but like he's he's been pretty good throughout this save. He had a real down year here in 2014. But I mean, 2012, 39 homers, 40 homers, then 34 homers in 2015, and 46 homers this year. Led the league and runs batted in. Um, so he has uh, 299 career homers. So he will uh, open next season looking for number 300. Simeon. He's got himself a uh, silver slugger. This was Simeon's best year so far. He's starting to look like the Marcus Simeon we know and love. Hunter Dozier, uh, Eugenio Suarez. This was there's a moment there where Eugenio Suarez looked like he was about to become one of the best players in the league. His development, um, you know, stunted a little bit, but he's been pretty darn good. 2015 he was bad, but 2016 he comes back strong. 26 homers, and he's playing shortstop for those Detroit Tigers. Or actually, it looks like, well, he won the award as shortstop. So I'm guessing he played more shortstop than second base. Let's take a look at his fielding stats. Yep, uh, 89 games at shortstop versus 71 at second base. So middle infielder for them. Dominic Brown, uh, at age 29, he grabs himself a Silver Slugger award. He had a really good year for Baltimore. Uh, Chris Davis wins in right field for the Rangers. Chris Davis has been pretty strong in terms of the power numbers. Trout obviously wins center. Josh Hamilton wins for designated hitter. Let's talk about Chris Davis a little bit because with 47 home runs, he led the um, American League, or he was tied with Trout, I think. 130 OPS plus. How many career home runs does Chris Davis have? 241. But I mean, look at this. I mean, look at this streak he's on. 46 in 2012, 33 in 2013, 31, 40, 47. Yeah, this is looking like Chris Davis, and I like that he's doing it with Texas as well, because that was the original team he came up into the majors with, with I believe. Uh, National League, Silver Slugger winners, Jordan Zimmerman, Juan Rosario, who's been the catcher for the Rockies for basically this whole save. Uh, this was a really good year for him. He wins his first Silver Slugger. Was he also an All-Star this year? Yeah, he was. Um, so he gets Silver Slugger. Miguel Cabrera wins Silver Slugger at first base, obvious. Trevor Story wins at second base. This was another really good year for Trevor Story. Those Rockies have a really sick core of position players. David Wright, Silver Slugger, third baseman, eight war season. Troy Tulowitzki, seven war season for him. He wins the Silver Slugger award. Um, looks like he's won that quite a bit, 
quite a bit in the National League. Let's take a look at Tulo's career stats. 50 war now, um, 260 home runs, 1,600 hits. He's 32 and still going strong, playing shortstop uh, alongside Trevor Story at second base. I know what could have been, right? Cargo wins in left field. Beast. Jock Peterson wins in center. So Jock Peterson's had himself a real career bounce back because he had a really good rookie year. In 2014, he was just kind of awful. And then 2015, 2016, really good. The game actually quite likes him as a center fielder. Looks like he's really developed well. And although he's, you know, not the greatest of outfielders in, in real life, like he's a legit center fielder in this save, and that's helping him a lot. That, that you know, with his power, and he steals 35. Wow, look at his speed and his stealing. I didn't even realize that. So this is like a very interesting, bizarro Jock Peterson we have here. And Joey Trudoslovich, the on-base percentage king with 141 walks. I tried to tell you guys about Joey Trudoslovich. Um, one of my favorite obscure Braves just because of his name mostly. Rookie of the year, John Kemmer. We talked about him on the Angels. I don't think I realized he was a rookie at the time, but John Kemmer grabs rookie of the year. Soler on the Blue Jays. He was actually Rule 5 drafted from the Cubs. That's pretty interesting, but Soler had a solid season. Micah Johnson, we saw him get traded a while ago. Kintamai Ada for the Mariners. He was picked ninth overall in that uh, first-year player draft last year. Looks like he had a really good season, 200 strikeouts. Trey Turner, we talked about him. And Shane Bieber, who was selected second overall. Really solid debut for Shane Bieber. 185 innings pitched, 3.79 ERA. And still, so much room to grow for Shane Bieber. Uh, we could see this guy be the best pitcher in the league soon. Hunter Renfro is your uh, National League Rookie of the Year. I feel like I haven't talked about him, but uh, he hit 30 home runs for the Reds. Uh, I gotta say, though, you know, despite slugging over 500, only 98 OPS plus, only 1.2 war. Curious to see what the rest of the class is looking like. Miles Hamblin, a catcher. Um, you know, his on-base percentage was like average. He had 16 homers, two war, uh, also a World Series champion. Willie Calhoun on the Dodgers. This just seems like it was a fairly weak rookie class in the National League this year. Yeah, not much going on here for Sam, Hale, uh, Sam Hilliard. Matt Bush, I might have just given it to Matt Bush at this point. At least, you know, he was a really effective uh, reliever for the Phillies. Saved 26 games. Camargo on the Diamondbacks. Eh. Daniel Robertson. Uh, let's see, Daniel. Yeah, I, I would have maybe given it to Matt Bush. We'll just have to see. Manager of the year is Brad Mills of the Houston Astros in the American League and the National League. It is, oh, go, oh goodness gracious, Carlos Anzaldua of the uh, Washington Nationals. This is his third year managing the Nationals. And uh, they were, of course, uh, World Series champions. So there you go. The American League Cy Young Award goes to Masahiro Tanaka. Interesting. I thought it might be Sale, but Tanaka wins with 27 first place votes, 2.59 ERA, 222 innings pitched. He uh, did lead the American League in war. Um, yeah, it was a really good season for him, but I feel like Chris Sale was very comparable. Chris Sale hadn't beaten ERA. Chris Sale hadn't beaten strikeouts, for example. But, you know, Tanaka, about 20 more innings pitched. I get it. And Felix does get a first place vote as well. Uh, he's just been dominant. James Paxton's up there getting some down ballot votes. He had 15 wins. He had 257 strikeouts. Josh Johnson continues to beast. 3.23 ERA this year. Only allowed eight home runs in 203 innings. It's a six-war season for Josh Johnson. And Sabathia, Mr. Consistent. It was a shame he had that injury in 2015, but this year he starts 29 games, 191 innings pitched. Um, the strikeout numbers aren't there. He's starting to get older. He's 36, but still a really effective pitcher in this league. Uh, he's currently at 240 career wins. I believe he finished with about 250 in real life. Might have been 251 or something like that. Uh, let's see if he's is he going to get to like 3,000 strikeouts. He is at, yep, oh, he's already passed 3,000 strikeouts. He's at 3,200. Wow, I mean, for total for his career, just because he's been so good, um, you know, in, the, in this simulation, which has been basically the latter half of his career. It feels kind of crazy to say, but like, is this, is it 87 F4 for him? I think now it's not. It's really it's really 79. It's really I think 79 F4, and then maybe the, his like minor league stats are in there for some reason. Let's look at. Let's make sure we get this right. Yeah, it's 79 WAR for him. Um, okay, here we go. Okay, so he's 240 wins, but yeah, getting close to 3,000 strikeouts and getting close to 80 WAR, he's probably gonna be a Hall of Famer. So that's Sabathia for you. Cy Young in the National League. No surprise at all. It's Clayton Kershaw. This is his third Cy Young Award. He won in 2011, which was before the simulation started, and then 2012. Probably the best year of his career so far, honestly. I mean, he was just unbelievable. Pitching triple crown, 10.8 F4. Uh, 
Way to go, Clayton Kershaw. Strasburg runner up. We talked about him. He's hurt. Madison Bumgarner. Jeremy Hefner, the Mets pitching coach. He just keeps going. And he just keeps going. Another huge year for him. Did not have the ERA of last year, but had more volume. He started, you know, six more games, 221 innings pitched. He strikes out 200 batters. Great season for Jeremy Hefner. David Price and Matt Latos, once again, uh, has been a very strong pitcher throughout this save. Let's take a look at his career stats at this point because he has a career 3.03 ERA, mostly pitching for the Cincinnati Reds. Really good pitcher in this save. We've seen uh, only one All-Star game, though. I'm surprised by only one All-Star game. Okay, here are your MVPs. Mike Trout is your unanimous MVP of the American League. Hard to be surprised. Monster year, 47 home runs, 9.6 war. Here's his career stats at the moment. Already up to 41 war, already up to 172 home runs and 193 stolen bases. Uh, Mike Trout, good at baseball. This is his third consecutive American League MVP award. Moustakis was the runner-up, so that's Mike Trout's teammate. Hunter Dozier just has been massive for the Yankees. I mean, it's kind of crazy because in real life, it's been kind of a struggle for Hunter Dozier ever since the uh, Royals handed him that extension. Brett Laurie, just, he's nuts. Like I said, he's Machado, basically. Pedro Alvarez, who was signed by those Detroit Tigers this offseason in the hopes of replacing the likes of Prince Fielder and Miguel Cabrera. He has a really good first season with Detroit. Happy for him, happy for Detroit. Edwin's up there, Gary Sanchez. Let's see here. Jason Castro had some votes. He was a really good catcher for the Astros this year. Joey Gallo, down ballot. He hits 37 more home runs. Joey Gallo is about to turn 23, and he has 170 career home runs. So that's a lot of fun, I think. Josh Donaldson, did he do it? Yep, same year as always for Josh Donaldson. Way to go, Josh Donaldson. He was Josh Donaldson this year. He's still with Oakland. Um, do they have him under a contract? Yeah, it looks like they um, extended him very recently. So he's got at least three more years, then he's got an opt-out, and then two more years after that if he does an opt-out. So he could play this entire save in Oakland, and he might as well play this entire save uh, just doing the same season every single year. I mean, it's crazy. Look how consistent this is. <laughs> it's kind of mind-blowing. Um, and then James Paxton's there. Domingo Santana, he had a big home run in the playoffs And then let's see uh, Miguel Cabrera here winning the National League MVP. He had 23 first place votes. The other seven went to Clayton Kershaw. That makes sense. But it's Miguel Cabrera, MVP. He leads home runs, runs batted in, slugging, OPS. I get it. Great season for Miguel Cabrera. This is MVP award number two for him. He also won in 2012. Um, This makes him... Does this make him only the second player in MLB history to win uh, the MVP award in the American League and National League after Frank Robinson? I believe that's true. Carlos Gonzalez, uh, runner-up, he's just been he's just been a stud. I mean, there's nothing else to say. Cargo now up to 42 career war, 216 homers. Uh, his career batting average, 328. So uh, Cargo, which is a monster for the Rockies. Bryce Harper, another great year for Bryce Harper. Seven more season. Jock Peterson, we talked about Jock Peterson. We've talked about pretty much everyone here. Uh, Steven Souza, another really good year for Steven Souza. Remember, he hit those 52 home runs, 9.6 war, 2015 NL MVP. But he still gets some down ballot voting here. Bregman appears. So here's Alex Bregman, uh, first overall pick in 2014 for the San Diego Padres. Really good year from him. He was also really good in 2015, but this year, 31 home runs, 901 OPS. 144 OPS plus, 6.7 war. Way to go, Alex Bregman. And Goldschmidt. Goldschmidt, I think this is the first time he's gotten down ballot MVP type stuff. 30 homers this year, 137 OPS plus, 5.7 war. He's been uh, pretty consistent throughout, although I noticed this 2015 really wasn't that great. So good bounce back year for Paul Goldschmidt. But anyways, it's Cabrera, it's Trout in 2016, and those are your MVPs. And now it's time for the first year player draft. We're here at the first year player draft in 2016. Alex kind of warned me that while this simulation rolled along, the draft classes might start to trend a little bit weaker, a little bit downwards. I think this is maybe the first year where I can really notice that, but it may just be a weaker class in general. You know, maybe in 2017, it'll be amazing. But so here are uh, here's who's available in that 2016 first year player draft this year. Keston Hura appears to be the prize among at least all position players. Second baseman, if he has a weakness, it's definitely strikeouts, but he could turn out to be a real beast in this. Uh, Ozzie Albies is here. I believe he was drafted last year. It looks like he's going to be hard to sign again this year. Guriel Jr. is here. Luke Voigt's here. 
Brian Anderson, you know who caught my eye? Tim LaCastro, 24 years old, entering that first year player draft. He actually has pretty solid ratings. There's a there's a universe where Tim LaCastro turns into a really good player, and I hope it's this one. Luis Roberts also in this draft class, but the deal is, you know, it doesn't appear he's quite as good as the, Lu- the Luis Robert we all know and love, although he does still have good power potential, very fast player. So, you know, maybe if, um, you know, he hits some of that talent change randomness, he beats his uh, projected potential, he could turn into a star. Uh, same with Joe Adele, but weird with Joe Adele. He's 17, but he, he seems to be pretty much a finished product. He does have high work ethic, though, so that could help his development. So those are your top batters available. Top starting pitchers, Luis Castillo and Zach Plesac and Austin Warner. And after that, I mean, you might see some names you recognize, but, um, you know, not a lot to talk about in terms of ratings. So here's Austin Warner. Looks like he could be pretty good. Here's Zach Plesac. Uh, High work ethic could aid his development. These are actually really, really nice ratings, even though it's a three-star potential. Um, Really, really good ratings if he fully develops. And then Luis Castillo's here. He is... Basically, MLB ready, I would say. He's ready to join the league in what will be his age 24 season next year, and he's definitely the best pitcher available, in my opinion. Let's talk about the draft order here. The Padres, once again, with the worst record. I feel like we've seen them pick first a couple of times already. One of those picks they used to get Bregman. They also picked Fernando Tatis Jr. last year, I believe, so let's check in on him. Uh, Tatis last year had a really good year um, in the minors. He's still only a one-star uh currently although still with five stars potential so uh he's he's developing along but it may be some time for them before they can really get like Bregman and Tatis going man they need all the help they can get any teams with two first round picks this year nope it's just the classic uh 30 teams right here nobody's got two first round picks uh Red Sox Phillies Orioles White Sox they're going to be the top five Diamondbacks pick last because they had the best record in MLB with 104 wins. Let's get this draft on the road. Let's see, who are the San Diego Padres going to pick? Okay, I feel like I should have mentioned Luke Voigt because he's kind of like the Jose Abreu of this draft class. He's going to enter, you know, with a ton of home run power, just ready to go and play first base for you from day one. So if you have any at first base, Voigt's going to be a really good pickup this year. Let's go ahead and see who do the San Diego Padres pick? Hopefully I can do this one pick at a time like I intend to do. They will pick Kesson Hira. Okay, so another five-star potential guy to go alongside Tatis, to go alongside Bregman. They're starting to build out the infield, but I just need to see them win. Let's go, Padres. Like, you have good young players. Start to build around them, you know. Uh, Boston Red Sox have the next pick. They will pick Albies, so they pick a second baseman of their own. Albies with really nice ratings. Um, I feel like the first time we might have seen him, his uh, his stats, his ratings did not look nearly as good. Now he looks like kind of the Aussie Albies we all know and love, so that's fun. Philadelphia, they get their next pick, and they're going to pick Duriel Jr. Um, a lot of power for a middle infielder, and actually may be capable of playing a decent shortstop, so fun pick. Uh, Orioles pick Luke Voigt, so it seems like he could slot in to like first base DH right away. Let's take a look at the Orioles. Like, how are they built at the moment? Their first baseman is Choi, uh, who had a pretty good season. Their DH is Colton Wong. Okay, so I could understand wanting you know Colton Wong to maybe play, you know, second base. Maybe they move on from one of these guys like Scope in the off season or something like that. So I think that's a good pick for them. I'd love to see Luke Voigt just go ahead and start opening day. I think he's looking pretty darn good. Chicago White Sox have the next pick. They're going to pick Brian Anderson, um, who's been a very good player for the Marlins. And actually, this is another one of those cases where I think you look at only three-star potential, which it's not like three-star potential is bad, right? There's a lot of good three-star potential or three-star players in this game. But these ratings are really, really, really nice. Could be a very good player. So I think with some of these players, even if the star ratings aren't eye-popping, there's talent here. Uh, Milwaukee has the next pick. They go Luis Castillo. So... There's a pitcher off the board. There's Luis Castillo. He could be MLB ready pretty soon. Maybe he'll pitch out of the bullpen for them to start the season. Brewers pitching right now. They have Homer Bailey. They have Tommy Han- uh, Tommy Hansen. Zach Drank, He had a really good year, um, although only started 23 games, sadly. He's had some injuries. Jake Peavy, Brandon McCarthy. Yeah, they could probably find room for him. Um, you know, because maybe some of those guys are leaving free agency. I don't know quite yet. Oakland, Zach Plesac. Spiders pick Mike Talkman. There's Mike Talkman. 
Um, strikeouts could be a weakness there. And then Kansas City, they picked Tim LaCastro. So Tim LaCastro picked 10th overall by Kansas City. I think that's a good note to go ahead and simulate the rest of this draft. And we'll check out the rest of the first round. Looking here at some other notable names. I said Tim LaCastro was picked 10th. He was actually picked 9th. Austin Warner, that other pitcher we were talking about. Cardinals picked him. Alejandro Kirk was picked by the Pirates. Uh, I spy Randy Rosarena joining the Dodgers. Again, he's not quite the Randy Rosarena uh, we know in real life, but you know that has a tendency to happen. And you know this is this is the joy of it. We don't want any players to be like a foregone conclusion. I see Taylor Walls joining the Spiders. I see Taylor Trammell joining the Phillies. I see Austin Adams joining the Mariners. I see. Uh, let's see some. There's some other names that I really like here. Mark Leiter Jr. joins the Royals. Royce Lewis. Here we go. Royce Lewis joins the Minnesota Twins. That's actually kind of appropriate, I must say. Um, but he's not. He's not like the mega prospect. Royce Lewis. I mean, he is. Like it's the same guy. But I'm just saying his ratings aren't like that. Drew Waters joins the Twins as well. Just looking for names here. I recognize Ivan Herrera. Okay, he's joined the Brewers. He's Ivan Herrera's a pretty decent prospect right now. Uh, let's see here. Pache is going to join the Royals. Torrey Hunter Jr. joins the Blue Jays. Evan White joins the Cubs. Yeah, there you go. That's your uh, that's your draft. Ooh, Mackenzie Gore joins the Pirates. At least he's got a nasty repertoire. So there you go. That's your first year player draft. No doubt headlined by Keston Hero with a five star potential. Come on, San Diego Padres. Like, why do they? They just kind of stink. They do just kind of stink. They were fifteenth in runs scored. And they were also 15th in runs against. So um, not a great formula there. Uh, Jay Happ with a 3.72 ERA went 6-14. and 14. Uh, Like, who's the best hitter? Well, it's definitely Bregman. Like, what's going on? Like, where? Okay, they have Grandal. But Grandal didn't have the best of years. Yeah, Grandal and Bregman are definitely their two best players. They also have Max Fried, um, who led the league in walks. So, sorry, Padres fans. Uh hasn't been the best of teams so far, but maybe they could start to turn it around. Maybe when Tatis gets up, maybe when Hura gets up, maybe it'll all gel. Who knows? We still have five more years of this to go, you know? It is the dawn of free agency, November 25th, 2016. Chris Sale is a free agent. He is the number one free agent, according to the game, demanding $34 million AAV. He's going to get paid. I thought he should have won the Cy Young Award last year. He did not, but he's had just some monster seasons for the Chicago White Sox, especially in 2015 and 2016. So Chris Sale at the age of 27, he's sort of the bell of the ball right now. Tulowitzki has been phenomenal as well. However, he is a bit older than Sale. He's like, well, he's really five years older than Sale. So he's probably not going to get a contract of the same length, but could actually do uh, pretty similar to Sale in terms of average annual value. So that's Tulo. Maybe he's leaving the Rockies. Um, there's a lot of interest in these guys already, so I imagine they might sign fast. Matt Latos has been really good throughout this. Uh, you know, he's just been really, really good, particularly for the Reds. Like, uh, as soon as we started the simulation with him on the Reds, it's like something, you know, something clicked for him. He had that 2013 that he missed due to injury, but these last three years, one of the better pitchers in the league for sure. So that's Matt Latos hitting free agency. He's kind of the guy that's like, well, if we don't get Chris Sale, maybe we should get Matt Latos, and it's a double whammy, actually, for the Reds, because they could lose Mike Leak as well, who's also been pretty instrumental for them, so that Reds uh, pitching could be weakened. Keep in mind, they are the defending champions of the NL Central. Ramos Ramirez hitting free agency. I mean, you might as well just sign him, right? I, You know, he's this could be like his age 39 season, so uh, yeah, but man, he's just, he's just been crazy in this save. Alex Gordon hits free agency. Um, he played last year with the Tigers, put up 4.4 war. There's Alex Gordon. Um, he also went to the Red Sox before that. Adam LaRoche is a free agent. Zobris is a free agent. Quaid is a free agent. Wow. I mean, the Reds could just lose, like, all their rotation right here. They could lose three of their guys. I hope they at least sign one of them back. Uh, and then Craig Kimbrell's a free agent, so he could be leaving Atlanta. I'm curious to see what a reliever of this caliber gets. I mean, that could be a really interesting contract just to see. And I want to take a look at Zobrist because Zobrist is one of my favorite players ever. Here's the uh, career stats of Ben Zobrist. Pretty close to real life, I would say. Pretty pretty darn close. But uh, yeah, there's Ben Zobrist for you. He, uh, of course, is a 2012 MLB champion because uh, Rays won the World Series in 2012. First year of the simulation. So yeah, 
those are your free agents, and uh, I'll check back in with y'all later in this offseason. It's now January 18th, 2017. We have moved into 2017 on the calendar. Here's your Hall of Fame voting results. Again, this is not, you know, PD is not a factor here. Character Claw is not a factor here. It's basically the Hall of Stats. And Manny Ramirez is your lone inductee in the class this year. Vladimir Guerrero in his first year got pretty close, as did Pudge Rodriguez. Uh, also on the ballot, you have guys like Billy Wagner. You have Andy Pettit. You have uh, Jason Giambi, Jim Edmonds, Barry Larkin. Of course, Larry Walker, we've been rooting for him, but he's at 13%. He's kind of fluctuated weirdly between like 15% and like 70%. So uh, this isn't the greatest simulation of Hall of Fame voting I've ever seen, but Manny Ramirez joining the Hall of Fame. And uh, I just want to check in and see if there have been some interesting trades before we check out the free agents. So there have definitely been some interesting trades, a lot of them involving relievers. It looks like David Hernandez is on his way to join the Dodgers. Um, he has been pitching for the White Sox before that, and even before that, the Arizona Diamondbacks. He's been a really good reliever throughout this save, so the Dodgers add to their bullpen. Um, in exchange, the White Sox receive Roberto Ramos, who appears to be potentially like a major league ready first baseman. Um, maybe not a star, but someone who could definitely contribute. Uh, another deal here between Miami and Cleveland that also involves a reliever. A.J. Ramos is on his way to pitch for Cleveland. He had been pitching in Miami throughout this save and had generally been pretty good. He had a 4.50 ERA in 2016, which wasn't great, but in, uh, sorry, in 2015, but in 2016 he had 23 saves and a 3.41 ERA, so he may be the closer for the Cleveland Spiders. Domingo Herman also involved in this trade. He's a relief prospect at the moment, maybe a fringe starter. Uh, Lonnie Chisenhall is who the Marlins received in return. This basically seemed to be kind of like uh, maybe Ramos is on like the last year of his deal. And, um, you know, maybe uh, it looks like, well, no, it looks like this is the last year on the deal for Chisholm Hall too. So Marlins get themselves a third baseman. What does, what's Ramos's contract look like? Okay. Yeah. Interesting. So there you go. Just a trade between the uh, Spiders and the Marlins there. Uh, another trade between uh, Cincinnati and uh, Boston, they've made a trade that involves uh, Brandon League. So Cincinnati adds to their bullpen. We're still curious to see about what they're going to do with their rotation. But uh, Brandon League, who previously pitched for the uh, Red Sox, now he's back with the Reds, which is who he pitched for in 13, 14, 15. But his best year was with the Red Sox. Um, involved in that trade, you have guys like, oh, Bob Steve, Robert Stevenson. Big fan of that guy. Uh, another trade we should talk about here involves Nate Jones going to the Yankees. And really interesting thing for Nate Jones, had a really, really bad year last year with the White Sox, 5.97 ERA. Uh, it was just a bad year, but in 2015, he was the American League reliever of the year. So if the Yankees get a bounce back there, that could be very helpful. He's making some money, and it just looks like the uh, White Sox in return just got some kind of amp prospects. At least they get to salary dump. Uh, and we've got a trade right here between Detroit and Philadelphia. Carlos Quinton is going to Detroit in exchange for some younger guys, including this relief prospect, Daniel Slania, who looks really good, and Donovan Walton. Uh, but here's Carlos Quinton. He's been an above-average hitter, you know, corner outfielder type throughout uh, most of this save. So he's going to be a uh, Detroit Tiger. I was going to say Philadelphia Philly, but he's been a Philly, and now he's a Tiger. And there's one more trade I wanted to talk about. Oh, yeah, it's this one. So the Reds, they're working on their rotation, and they've kind of gone like, you know, this is kind of like a budget buy for them, I would say, but they have traded for Jeff Locke uh, with the Pittsburgh Pirates. A lot of players involved in that trade, but they received Jeff Locke, who's been uh, an average, maybe even slightly above average starting pitcher for uh, the Pittsburgh Pirates. So, uh, you know, with guys like uh, Latos and uh, Cueto and Leak hitting free agency, you know, the Reds, they're scrambling for starting pitching. And you're going to see in a minute... They've made some other big starting pitching moves as well in the free agent market. So the two main guys left to sign are Kimbrel and Aramis Ramirez. Dominic Brown, who was a Silver Slugger winner, he's also a free agent. And then Jake McGee and Sergio Romo, who have been two really good relievers throughout this uh, simulation. They're still free agents, but I'm really curious to see about Aramis Ramirez and Craig Kimbrell personally. But the rest have signed. 
Troy Tulowitzki has signed a five-year contract worth $126 million with the New York Yankees. That's going to take him until he's like 37 years old. He's, of course, been a monster throughout this simulation. You know, he's a huge, like, what-if guy who it seemed like was on his way to a Hall of Fame career and then suffered quite a few injuries. So it's good to see him, you know, complete his tenure with Colorado, still really healthy, still playing really well, and actually ends up with the Yankees, which is the last team he played for in MLB in real life. So that's Troy Tulowitzki going to the Yankees. Yankees seem to be signing all the players that I like because they also got Votto. Uh, Matt Latos is going to join the Boston Red Sox. Huge ad for the Boston Red Sox, in my opinion. They add Matt Latos, and he instantly becomes their ace. You look at the rest of their pitching, and you're like, okay, yeah. I mean, they were the, they had the worst uh, ERA among starting pitching last year, so that's a big ad for a team that just needs pitching, you know? Uh, the Red Sox with some serious pitching needs. Speaking of which... Uh, I only say that because Chris Sell uh, plays for the Red Sox in real life. Chris Sell is showing the Cincinnati Reds. So interesting uh, dynamic here with the Cincinnati Reds. They look at, you know, Lados, Leak, Cueto leaving potentially, and they're like, let's just go get the best guy available. And they sign Chris Sale to a seven-year deal worth $187 million. He's going to be a Cincinnati Red. That is a big, big signing. Phil Hughes joining the Minnesota Twins. I just kind of like that because it was appropriate. Alex Gordon also going to the Reds. So, you know, the Reds, basically last year, their entire offense was like Miguel Cabrera. Uh, And so they were like, maybe we need to sign a bat. And they sign Alex Gordon, also a good defender. Johnny Cueto is going to join the White Sox. So it's kind of like Cueto and Sale have swapped places in this. Cueto gets a seven-year deal as well, although his is worth $93 million. Uh, Mike Leake is joining the Minnesota Twins on a four-year deal worth $86 million. I think the Twins have some good pitching. They have Tanaka, they have Leak, they add Hughes. How did Timlins come do last year? He's 4.36 ERA. Like I've kind of said before, but 107 ERA plus. Like I've said with Lincecum right now, it's all about we, we need the volume, Tim. You know, we had the peak, we had the Cy Young Awards. You know, just rack up the counting stats. You can be like an average pitcher. You just need to be an average pitcher for like a while. And then hopefully he could be like a Hall of Famer someday. Uh, and then Trevor Williams, he's their uh, number five starter. He's only 24 and looks like he had a solid year for them as well. They have uh, Barrios currently in the bullpen, but he, you know, of course, has started potential. So good pitching on the Minnesota Twins. Um, Good job by them. But, yep, it's still yet to be seen where Ramirez, Kimbrell, you know, Dominic Brown, Jake McGee, where they're going to sign. But that's where things stand right now. Let's zoom ahead to spring training. So I've zoomed forward here about another month. This is the dawn of spring training. Kimbrell's still a free agent, but he has interest from Oakland, the Angels, and the Royals. So hopefully he'll sign soon. I also noticed that David Ortiz is a free agent. He's still going. He had a really good season in 2016 for the Detroit Tigers. That was his age 40 season, which is when his uh, he retired in real life. Um, this season wasn't quite as good as that age 40 season, but man, I mean, 27 home runs, 125 OPS plus 2.9 more. Uh, he's still going. And so he leaves Detroit. Let's see how many, like how many home runs does he have? 515 career home runs for David Ortiz, career 135 OPS plus, uh, how many hits over 2,500 and he's still going like, this is going to be like his age 41 season. Uh, Reds, I noticed, signed Matt Garza, so they continue to add to their pitching. I also noticed a six-year deal for Jeremy Hellickson. I feel like I didn't even mention him, but uh, that seems like a lot for Jeremy Hellickson, personally, but it's it's a lower AAV, so Boston has definitely made some moves this offseason, which would be really good because they they were not good last year. Anyways, Aramis Ramirez, the absolute mad lad of this save, signs a three-year deal with the Cincinnati Reds. So the Reds have been extremely active this offseason. They add another bat in the form of Ramirez. They already added uh, Alex Gordon. They've added, you know, Chris Sale. So this is going to be a pretty fun team next year, I think, no matter what. Like, even if they're bad, it'll be still still be, like, very entertaining. And so, and also they trade for Brandon Leak. So Reds, very active this offseason, trying to make up for losing Cueto, Latos, and Leak. And I almost feel like it's going to work out for them in the end. C.J. Wilson uh, joining Texas on a sort of a like uh, kind of prove it deal, I guess, because he got injured. But actually, I mean, just in general, he's been really good. And so, you know, I like that he returns to Texas. Um, And I think this is like a really good one year deal for Texas. I kind of wish they signed him for two, but he is 36 years old. So I get it. But yeah, that's your uh, current free agent signings. Let's check in to see who are the current like winners and losers of this offseason in terms of war. 
So the top three in terms of war gained are the Yankees, Reds, and Mets. I believe the Yankees topped this list last year, and you know, considering that they uh, had a really good season last year, you know, they continued to get stronger. They were the AL East champions, and the fact that they signed Tulo, they also signed Benzo Rist. Um, they add Nate Jones via trade, and you know, we're talking about a guy who was reliever of the year a couple years ago. They also uh, trade for a uh, Paul Mahalam. Maybe that's just pitching depth right there. And they just haven't lost too much. They lost Chris Young. They lost uh, Roki Kuroda, who I'm curious to see if his career will continue because he's 42 now, but also like he can still give you, like he can eat the innings, you know? So that's really cool. Cincinnati Reds, you know, they are still adding war. And I think that's really key. Even though they lose Latos, even though they lose Leak, um, even though they lose Cueto, who signed with the White Sox, and Michael Bourne, and Renfro via trade. We got to talk about that because I think when he rookie of the year. Um, but yeah, they add Chris Sale, they add Ron Ramirez, they add Alex Gordon, they add Matt Garz, they add Jeff Locke. It's looking pretty good for the Reds who are the uh, defending champions in that NL Central, albeit only won 83 games. Let's talk about this trade that involves Hunter Renfro because, I mean, he was rookie of the year. It was a really weak rookie class, but he was rookie of the year. Um, they received Tyson Ross in return, so they continue to add uh, you know, some to their pitching. Tyson Ross was like he could be like a league average starter potentially if uh, everything goes his way. Anyways, the teams that lose war, Rays, Rockies, White Sox. I feel like the Rays have been sort of hemorrhaging war for a bit now. They lose Coco Crisp to free agency. Well, they had, he hasn't signed yet, but they could lose him for sure. Zobrist gone. Matt Wieters was traded, so we got to talk about that for sure. Alan Craig, Alex Cobb uh, is a Dodger, and the only guy they sign is, or they add Harada Parra via trade, so we should talk about these trades right here. Uh, this one's recent, happened in February. Uh, Arizona received Matt Wieters, and Tampa Bay received Harada Parra and Harrison Cooney, who is a pitching prospect. So, uh, yeah, interesting trade there. What's the contract like for Wieters? I, I see, okay, so he still has about four years, maybe about $40 million, and I think salary was maybe a concern uh, Gerardo Parra's contract expires at the end of this season. So kind of a salary dump on a really still solid player in Matt Wieters, although uh, his hitting has not been amazing in the last couple years, but still Arizona gets a gold glove, perennial gold glove catcher. So ultimately, I think I like it for them. Uh, we talked about the Rays. Let's talk about the uh, Rockies. Of course, they lose too low. Um, they also lose Corey Dickerson. They lose Nelson Cruz to free agency. I didn't even think I realized he was playing for them, although it looks like he's more like a pinch hitter, platoon type. Um, so, yeah, I mean, mainly it's just they lose. I mean, they lose Tulo. Tulo's going to be a Yankee now, so that's a huge uh, shift. And Chicago White Sox, of course, lost Chris Sale. Um, they also lose Francisco Liriano, or they might lose Francisco Liriano if they don't resign him. Uh, traded Nate Jones, traded Addison Reed. We talked about those trades. They add Johnny Cueto, though, so it's good that they at least add somebody. And honestly, Tom uh, Wilhelmson has been uh, a really good reliever. He was really good uh, with Seattle. I, didn't, I don't think I realized he ended up with Texas last year, but that's a decent add. But yeah, still worried about those White Sox losing Chris Sale. It stinks. Um, so yeah, I think that's uh, that's where things stand as far as spring training goes. Let's check in at opening day. We're here on opening day 2017. Craig Kimbrell is definitely a person of interest. He has signed a one-year deal with the Detroit Tigers. It's a shame he has to settle for a one-year deal, but at least it's worth $14 million. But yeah, this has been such a dominant reliever, and now he's going to be the closer for the Tigers. The other sort of person of interest was actually David Ortiz, and it looks like he's going to be a Milwaukee Brewer. So he kind of serves the role that Aramis Ramirez has been serving for them. But it's crazy to think, oh, wow, David Ortiz at the age of 41 is not only going to play, but he's also going to like play the field. Like He's going to play first base for them. They have Chris Davis still, so a lot of slugging potential in the middle of that Brewers lineup. So that's definitely going to be an interesting team. Now I want to check in just with the rest of the top players around the league. So here are your top hitters in the league going into the 2017 season, according to the OOTP star system. Your five-star players, Bryce Harper, Brett Laurie, I know, I know, but look at his ratings. Oh my goodness, he's a beast. And Brett Laurie's cool too because... The Blue Jays haven't had much going on in this save. They have some good players. Um, Edwin's been really good throughout this save, but this guy right here, Jason Leblebejan, Le <laughs> has been uh, a, one of the top prospects for a while. And if his ratings can just develop, even though he's about to be 26, 
Um, and, you know, if Jack Flaherty can get it together, he was their fourth overall pick in that 2014 first-year player draft. They could make it work. I'm rooting for them because they really haven't done too much throughout this save so far. Story's a five-star player, and, of course, Trout's a five-star player. Your four-and-a-half stars, Bregman, Jock Peterson, who uh, I mentioned it before, but Jock Peterson is like bizarro Jock Peterson. He's very fast. He can steal bases. He can play a very, very, very competent center field. I'll put it that way. Um, Buster Posey's still here. He's still kicking around. 130 OPS plus, 5.4 war last year. No big deal. Corey Seager, minor injury. This one's really interesting to me. So Daniel Vogelbach has kind of come out of nowhere with these ratings. He appears to be someone who should be one of the best hitters in the league. Last year playing for the Cubs and even in 2015 as well, but really last year because I guess his ratings started to come along. He beasted. He had a 150 OPS plus. However... He has a problem. There's no there's no universal DH. And, of course, first base is occupied by Rizzo, who has been a monster in back-to-back seasons. In fact, he put up the same OPS in back-to-back seasons. So, basically, Vogelbach needs to get traded or universal. He needs something. He needs full playing time. Uh, Jose Abreu's there. Matt Adams is there. He hit 35 home runs last year. We can talk about Mookie Betts because I know that's definitely a person of interest. His power has come up a little bit, but still he only hit six home runs last year. I really thought 2015 was going to be the beginning of the breakout, but he basically repeated that in 2016. He's a second baseman for the uh, Red Sox in this universe. Josh Donaldson, same old, same old with him. Hunter Dozier. We should talk about Matt Holliday because I didn't talk about him this year, but I've talked about him a good bit throughout this save. Um, This was his first year on the new contract with the St. Louis Cardinals, so he was a free agent, then he returned. So in 2016, what does he do? Same as it ever was with Matt Holliday. Absolute beast of a season. Just love watching him progress. He's now 37 years old, but he's up to 63 war and a career 144 OPS plus. 300 homers, 2200 hits. Yeah, I mean, he's been a joy to watch. Hayward, of course, a beast as always. He's up to 40 career war, and he's not even 28 yet. Um, just a war machine, basically. Built for war. Matt Holliday. J.D. Martinez, the pride of the Houston Astros, has had two really good back-to-back seasons for them. Real Muto on the Marlins. He was a former number one prospect. He's had a couple five-war seasons. Rendon's here. He had a bit of a down year, but he's still definitely a stud. Rizzo, stud. Gary Sanchez, couple silver sluggers now. Tulo joining the Yankees. Luke Voigt, um, hopefully just uh, just get in there for the uh, Baltimore Orioles real soon. He's played three games at AAA already, but I bet he'll play the majority of the year in the majors. Any other four-star guy, four star guys? Excuse me. Yelich. Yelich had a six-war season last year. That was the best year of his career so far. Did it in 136 games. Not much of a base stealer last year. Only eight steals, but 23 home runs. That's by far his highest home run total so far. So Yelich and Real Muto... Definitely starring for the Marlins, who have uh, fallen off our radar a little bit, but hopefully they can turn in an interesting season this year. Top starting pitchers. You see Strasburg. He suffered that injury during the playoffs last year. He still has three months on that torn labrum, but he's a four-and-a-half-star guy, as is Chris Sale joining the Reds. King Felix now entering his second year with the Yankees. He's been unbelievable. And Kershaw, the lone five-star, had a monster, 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 monster year in 2016. Maybe he'll keep it up. Bowers here in the uh, with the Dimebacks, Bumgarner on the Cardinals, Degrom. We should talk about. You know he had some injuries last year. He had a you know 4.3 ERA. FIP was better than that. Perfidals still look pretty good for him. His 2015 has definitely been his best year of his career so far. He has potential to grow if that movement can come along. That'd be big. But again, you know he's about to be 29, so it's yet to be seen. I mean, let's be honest. Degrom didn't really turn into the Degrom we know and love until about like 2018. So. Uh, we'll see what happens there, but Jeremy Hefner has honestly been the ace of this staff lately. I mean, it's unbelievable to say. Matt Harvey, I'm sure people are interested in. He hasn't been bad. He hasn't been a Cy Young guy, but he's been, you know, solid enough. And then Patrick Corbin's there too. Don't forget about Patrick Corbin acquired in a very consequential trade. Uh, let's see, other four-star guys, uh, Josh Johnson, still on the Tigers, Matt Latos joining the Red Sox, Chris Medlin, who was a Cy Young winner in 2015, looks like he also had a really good 2016, David Price has been a beast, Hyunjin Ryu, you know, he's pitching in core, so he's got a unique challenge with that, but 
He's done quite admirably. You Darvish, and let's see Jose Fernandez here. We should check in on Jose Fernandez. Last year, only 26 games started. It looks like he had a strained hamstring that caused him to miss about five weeks of the season, but a 3.06 ERA, 134 ERA plus, 4.5 war. Uh, he looks like a great pitcher. He's still only 24. Here's his uh, career stats. He had a bad year in 2015. Um, but overall, yeah, I mean, he's got the potential to be much better than he has been. And I would love to see him put it together. Still, his 2013, his age 20 season remains his best season so far in the simulation. So that's Jose Fernandez. Those are the top pitchers in the league right now. Let's move on to the preseason predictions. So here's your preseason predictions for that 2017 season. The game seems to think the Yankees will come out on top in the AL East, but it has the Blue Jays close by. And I would really like to see the Blue Jays, you know, contend for a playoff spot this year. Yankees, of course, continue to add good players. Um, you know, they just added Troy Tulowitzki. They've added Votto in previous years. They've added Felix Fernandez in previous years. They're always just, it's like clockwork seems to be signing one of the top free agents every year. So that's where the Yankees are right now. And don't forget about like Hunter Dozier, who's been, you know, one of their best players for sure. They still have Nick Swisher. Robinson Cano looks like had a solid return to the Yankees. His worst year still remains that 2014 with Boston. He was pretty weak. Uh, Minnesota Twins projected to win the Central and also projected to win 104 games, which was like the highest win projection for any team. Not sure if I see it, but I do like their pitching a lot. Tanaka, Lee, Hughes, Lincecum, Trevor Williams. I'm just not sure if I quite see it as in terms of are they going to be able to score enough runs to like win 100 games? I don't know. I'm not saying they can't win the division. I just don't know about that offense. Uh, Detroit Tigers also have a, a decently optimistic projection. Of course, they're kind of in a similar situation. They have great pitching with Johnson, Porcello, Scherzer. Uh, Drew Smiley pitched out of the pen for them some, but he could be a good starter. And then interestingly enough, their fifth starter, I feel like I haven't talked about him yet, but it's Luis Severino. Um, he pitched out of the bullpen last year, but he's currently scheduled to be their fifth starter. And I think that could be a really good fifth starter for them. So that's Detroit. Houston Astros projected to win the West. Um, you know, we've talked about them. They were uh, went wire to wire in that World Series, uh, sadly lost Game 7. Uh, they add James Paxton. Wow, we should talk about that because that's a huge trade. James Paxton has been traded to the Houston Astros. Um, that was a trade done in February. In return, Seattle receives Garrett Whitley, who looks to be a, a very, very strong outfield prospect. Uh, this closing prospect, Dakota Meeks, Mex, who also looks really good. Mike Martin, Jace Fries, so... I guess Paxton, his contract was getting up there. His, um, uh, you know, he'll hit free agency in, it appears, like a couple of years. But yeah, I guess, so sort of a salary dump, you know, rebuild, uh, but also get some really good prospects in return. That's a really big trade because Paxton's been an ace for Seattle really ever since King Felix left. Um, so there you go. That's the uh, American League. Atlanta Braves projected to win the NL East. They were, of course, the uh, World Series champions in 2015. They still have pretty much the core of that team intact. Trudosovic, the on base percentage king. They have Freddie Freeman still. They have Ryan Zimmerman still. Um, and then they're, uh, they have Medlin, who was a Cy Young winner in 2015. Um, their rotation, Julio Tehran, Mike Miner, Randall Delgado, Williams Perez. Those guys have been there for a while. That, that team has stayed pretty glued together, even though they didn't even make the playoffs last year. They also like the Marlins at 92 wins. Cardinals projected to win the Central. That would be interesting to see. Uh, let's check it on Aaron Judge. Aaron Judge had a 121 OPS plus, 27 homers last year. Matt Holliday, of course, the beast. He just keeps chugging along. Molina last year. Okay, Molina, this was the first time Molina really faltered. It was his age 34 season, or age 33 season at least last year. He just didn't hit nearly as well as he has been hitting. But uh, you can see he was on quite a tear uh, throughout the simulation, a lot of really good seasons, and he's still, you know, a gold glove guy. Uh, Arizona Diamondbacks projected to win the West. They won 104 games last year, right? Something like that. They're just a crazy good team. Dodgers projected to win 93 games. I'd love to see the Dodgers win the division. It's not going to be easy, but they do have a good team. 
Um, you know, Seeger's really come along. Peterson's a beast. They do have Ryan Braun. Uh, and then pitching, you know, with Kershaw, I mean, he's a monster. Masterson, who they added a couple off seasons ago, he's pretty good too. Projected top players uh, in the National League, Matt Adams, Miguel Cabrera, Jack Peterson, Corey Seeger, Jason Hayward. Top pitchers, Kershaw, Price, Bauer, Bumgarner, Mike Miner on the Braves. I feel like we haven't talked a lot about Mike Miner. Top hitters, Brett Laurie. Oh my goodness, he's such a beast. Miguel Sano, Hunter Dozier, Edwin Encarnacion, Mookie Betts. Top pitchers, King Felix, Josh Johnson, Tanaka, Jared Parker, Chris Archer. Let's talk about Jared Parker real quick because he was one of those guys that would definitely be interesting to do a re-simulation of. Has a couple really good seasons with Oakland as a young pitcher. Then, as I said, I think in maybe the first episode of this series, arm exploded. Um, here he's doing pretty well. Career 3.77 ERA. So that's where things stand going into opening day. I will see you guys at the end of May, and we can check in on the season in progress. Actually, I totally lied. We still have to do the top 100 prospects, guys. Of course, I'm not going to tell you all 100 of them, but Tatis is number one, and Kesson Hira is number two. So as bad as the Padres have been, they do benefit from picking, you know, first overall a few times in that first-year player draft. They also picked, I think, Bregman first overall. So Hira and Tatis... Uh, top two prospects right now. Walker Bueller is a Pittsburgh Pirate. Looks like he could be a very good pitcher if his control can develop. Um, so he's number three. He's the number one ranked pitcher. Brian Reynolds is a Dodger, so it's kind of like they've swapped places. I've never heard of Cody Kukuk. Let's look at Cody Kukuk, a lefty with nasty stuff in Washington system. Remember, they also have Herman Marquez, so there's some young pitching in Washington to keep an eye on. Lance McCullers Jr., I feel like, has been on this list for a long time. Um, for some reason, I guess they just won't move him up in the minors or whatever. Like, put him in, but he's, he's a one and a half star overall. So it's going to come down to that control. Obviously, he's a 25 control at age 23, uh, which isn't amazing. But um, there's still there's still hope for Lance McCullers. Ozzy Albies, one of the top prospects. He was just picked by the Red Sox in that first year player draft, as was uh, Guriel Jr. Jesus Tinoco. Uh, a pitcher for Toronto, so that's another young player for Toronto to get excited about. A lot of these guys are listed as relievers. Looks like he might come out of the pen this year, but he still has potential long-term as a starting pitcher. He's very young. He's only 21. And Moncada uh, is the final member of the top 10. He was picked third overall in the 2014 first-year player draft. He could be uh, reaching the major leagues this year for the Philadelphia Phillies. Here's the rest of your top 100. I see Pete Alonso. I see Luke Voigt. I see Acuna and Soto on the Red Sox and Astros, respectively, as well as uh, Brandon Lau. I see Jordan Alvarez. I see Ahmed Rosario. I see Bellinger, who, of course, was traded to the Cardinals a few off-seasons ago. I see Brent Honeywell. I see Mike Scirocco. And your final member of the top 100 is a fella by the name of Federico Celli. Celli? I don't know, but he's on the Cubs. And those are your top 100 prospects. May 31st, 2017, first couple months of the season are out of the way, and it's the Los Angeles Dodgers who have the best record in Major League Baseball as things stand. Granted, it's still early days, but you know the Diamondbacks have been such a powerhouse throughout this save, but they're nine games behind those Dodgers. We were expecting a Dodger breakout at some point. It may be this year. Kershaw's having a great year. Justin Masterson also doing really well, but it's the top half of that lineup that I think is making a big, a big difference. Ryan Braun looking like a good leadoff hitter at the moment with a 377 on on-base percentage. Corey Seager's injured diagnosis pending. Sometimes those could be bad. However, he was off to a really hot start this season. Jack Peterson honestly could be a MVP candidate if he keeps it up. That's how good he is. Billy Butler also hitting well for them, country breakfast. But it's this back maybe third of the lineup, Andre Ethier, Tyler Ogle, Eric Chavez. That could do better. I mean, Eric Chavez, pretty old. He's 39, still playing. But the Dodgers lead. They have the best uh, record in the NL West, best record in the Major League Baseball. Cardinals lead the Central. They've opened up a five-game lead, or excuse me, a four-game lead on the Pittsburgh Pirates. Bumgarner's having a phenomenal year. Could be a Cy Young candidate when, when it's all said and done. They have some other really good pitching performances. So Fredo Garcia's been... Uh, really consistent for them, um, you know, just give, giving them solid starts, nine starts with a 3.04 ERA. He also had a really good uh, rookie year in 2014 and follow-up to it in 2015. 2016, he faltered, but he looks to be back in Kennedy's there. Brett Cecil's there. He's coming uh, out of the rotation. I know he's pitched out of the bullpen some. 
And yeah, Aaron Judge on pace for 34 homers. He's having a potential breakout year. Molina is hitting really, really well after he sort of stepped back last year. Matt Carpenter's there. Matt Adams, huge power hitter, great cleanup guy. Marlins lead the NL East. That's pretty interesting. Yelich is having a good season. He also had a really good season in 2016. So I think Yelich is really emerging as one of the better players in the league at the moment. Kyle Schwarber, goodness gracious, Kyle Schwarber. Get it together, man. Um, Giancarlo, slow start. He's had some slow starts. Hopefully he can get back on track. Real Mudo is doing great. But it's Jose Fernandez. We are really rooting for Jose Fernandez. He's having a phenomenal start to the season. 2.31 ERA through his first 10 starts. Maybe he'll be a Cy Young candidate. Who's, who can say, though? You know, it's only a third of the way through. Braves are in second. Angels lead the West. Mike Moustakis looks like he's having a great year. 130 OPS plus. He's just been really huge for the Angels in this save ever since they acquired him from the Kansas City Royals. Trout also having... Wow, I mean, look at the start to this season Trout's having. I mean, that's just ridiculous. Oh, my goodness. He's just going absolutely insane. Are we talking about four in a row? Maybe it's a little early to say. Jared Weaver's back. He was their ace who was injured last season. Um, Garrett Richards, surprisingly, though, best ERA in the rotation at the moment, 2.52 through his first nine starts. That's the Angels. White Sox lead the Central. That's pretty exciting. Brandon Woodruff is, uh, you know, he was pretty good in 2016. But, I mean, this 2017 could be Cy Young candidate at the end of the year. It's just the way he's pitching right now. He was the third overall pick in that 2013 first-year player draft. I believe he was the first pitcher off the board in that draft. He's looking like a stud for those Chicago White Sox that lost Chris Sale, so they needed someone like him to step up. Cueto's there as well. They added him in the offseason. And their lineup is just pretty solid all around. It's not too amazing, but, I mean, Jose Martinez, he's hitting well. Duvall's hitting well. Uh, Simeon has uh, emerged as one of their best players. So that's a look at the White Sox. I'm not sure if we've seen them in the postseason yet. They might have made like a wild card game or something like that, but would love to see them make a deep postseason run. And in the East, the Yankees lead. I know we're rooting for the Blue Jays, but they're about eight games behind. Boston trails them by one game. Yep, these are the Yankees. They have Zobris, they have Votto, they have Cano, they have Tulo. They have King Felix. Sabathia not having a great start to the year, but honestly, his FIP isn't too bad. He may just be getting kind of unlucky on that front, but those are the Yankees. Those are a team that's just, they just keep adding guys, you know, and, and it just doesn't, there's never really been any sense of like rebuild. They just go out and they sign the next big free agent and keep it going. That's the New York Yankees way, I guess. So there you go. Let's look at the stat leaders real quick, just around the league. We can get more in depth on this once we get to the All Star break. Jesse Winker leads batting average 388, also leads on base percentage. Trout leads slugging and OPS. Winker second in OPS. Voigt, we talked about him. Voigt has come up for the Baltimore Orioles. Could be a huge year for him. Uh, JD Martinez, Freddie Freeman, Albert Pujols. Freddie Freeman, ooh, okay, this is important. Injury update. Freddie Freeman on May 20th suffered a fractured fibula. He'll be out for the next three months, so that's a huge blow to the Braves as they're trying to compete in that NL East, which is currently being led by the uh, Miami Marlins. And Jacoby Ellsbury leads stolen bases with 17. Pitching leaders, best ERA belongs to Wade Miley on Arizona, followed by Bumgarner. Jeremy Hefner, man, he just keeps going. Woodruff, Marco Gonzalez, Chris Medlin, Clay Kershaw, and Bumgarner are tied for first in war. Chris Perez of the Los Angeles Dodgers, so I guess this is sort of their Kenley Jansen replacement he's become with a .83 ERA and 16 saves. He's having a really good uh, start to his year. And Trevor Bauer leads strikeouts. Trevor Bauer also with a 3.25 ERA. He's just kind of been a strikeout machine throughout this uh, save. He's got 200 strikeouts each of the last three years. And right now he could be on pace for 300. We haven't seen anyone do it yet, but I'd like to see somebody do it. At the All-Star break, I think it'd be wise just to do sort of an injury update around the league. We'll start with the pitchers because they're generally going to be more injury prone than the hitters. Jeremy Hefner has biceps tendonitis. This is an injury only suffered a few days ago, but he'll miss three weeks of the season. He's been pretty dominant like the last, you know, four years or so. Um, so I'm glad it's a minor injury. Josh Johnson's got a little worse shoulder inflammation, which he suffered about 10 days ago. That's a two-month injury for him, so he's going to miss two months of the season. That's a real bummer for the Detroit Tigers. They rely on him heavily. Homer Bailey, shoulder inflammation, but this is really just the latest in a longer line of injuries. He had a torn meniscus that basically ended his 2016 season, so he hasn't pitched in over a year, basically. So 
huge bummer for Homer Bailey. He just keeps getting injured, keeps suffering injuries while he's trying to uh, recover. Among the batters, it's just Freddie Freeman with that fractured fibula. He has seven weeks remaining on that. It's a shame because he was off to a really hot start for those start, hot start. Excuse me for those Atlanta Braves who are now trailing the uh, Miami Marlins by about six games now. Yep, they're six games behind. The Marlins coming out on top. This could be a big year for them. And looky here, the Pittsburgh Pirates have jumped out in front in that NL Central. So let's talk about the Pittsburgh Pirates real quick. Howie Kendrick, of course, they acquired him um, in a trade with the Los Angeles Angels. That was sort of midseason last year. He's their uh, second baseman, McCutcheon. Having an all right year, 2016 was much better for him. He's been kind of up and down throughout this save. He's had, uh, you know, some decent years, but really that 2016 was his best by far, I think. Uh, Gregory Polanco, Neil Walker, but, you know, overall their offense is not the greatest. It's the 13th best in the National League. However, the pitching has been a strength for sure. They have Tyone. This guy, David Burkhalter, is only 21. He has a 3.26 ERA. Marco Gonzalez, who they drafted third overall in the 2012 first-year player draft, he's pitching well for them. They have a strong bullpen. That's where uh, Walker Bueller has ended up at least now for this year. He's up in the majors for the first time, and he's actually their closer. He'll probably be in the rotation for them long term. Uh, This guy, Mitch uh, Horsek, 25 years old. 2.48 2.48 ERA in the first 16 games started, having a phenomenal year. So that's the Pittsburgh Pirates. If they succeed, it will be because of their pitching. Angels still have a one or sorry two and a half game lead in that AL West. Twins lead the AL Central. They've taken that over from the Chicago White Sox. Um, Lincecum about league average 4.56 ERA looks scary, but this is 2017. This is a much higher run environment than we're used to seeing. So that's actually a 107 ERA plus. So he's above average there. Phil Hughes is there, but it's Tanaka and Leak so far who look really good. And Trevor Williams looks really good too. So we talked about their pitching preseason. We still really like it in terms of runs against their second in the American League. And, you know, the lineup has done pretty well, probably a little bit better than I thought it would. Their sixth in run scored. Sano is looking great. Dominic Brown, who was a silver slugger last year, he's looking really good. He may win another one of those. They have Michael Brantley as their designated hitter. Aaron Hicks has been... Um, you know, a decent leadoff hitter, like a 351 on base percentage. Can't complain about that too much. Jorge Polanco, Max Kepler also there. So, uh, And Nico, Nico Goodrum, I should point out, um, has had an amazing start to this year. I didn't even really realize he was like on the Twins. I guess he was like originally in the Twins minor league system. I always think of him as a Tiger, but Nico Goodrum on pace for a 30 homer season. On His OPS is over 900. We're talking about a 140 OPS plus. So Nico Goodrum having a huge year. Big difference maker for the Twins. Meanwhile, Yankees two and a half games ahead of the Boston Red Sox. Let's look at the Red Sox real quick. They have Mookie Betts going absolutely bananas right now. One uh, OPS over 1,000, 167 OPS plus on pace for a nine more season. Goodness gracious, way to go. Uh, Albert Pujols still going pretty strong for them. He's had a bit of a renaissance. I was a little bit worried. You know, 2012, 2013 weren't the best years with the Angels, but lately he's been really good. You know, 139 OPS plus in 15, and it's just he's been really good basically the last three years. So happy to see that for Pujols, who's now 37 years old. In fact, the Red Sox offense in general, really good. And I can't help but notice Ronald Acuna is here. It does not look like, you know, his full potential is going to be like absolute superstar necessarily, but he is up in the majors and he's only 19 and he's playing center field for them. Matt Latos has been a pretty big ad. They needed pitching, and uh, he is definitely delivering it. So that's a look around the league. Let's look at the All-Star Game rosters. All-Star Game rosters are here, and it looks like Brandon Woodruff is getting a start in the American League. That's awesome to see. Good for the White Sox. Tanaka's there. Garrett Richards is there. We talked about him. Matt Moore. He's been uh, pretty great throughout this save. I mean, this guy, you know, is a former, like, number one prospect. It's good to see him deliver in this save with a career 3.19 ERA, career 130 ERA+. plus. He's been very good th- for the Rays, and the Rays in general have been pretty good, you know, throughout these uh, first five years or so we've done. Mike Leake is there, new member of the Minnesota Twins. Latos is there, so the former Reds are doing well. And a new face, Blake Beaven. You know, the Mariners, they lost Felix to free agency. They traded Paxton, so they need all the pitching help they can get. Blake Beaven's an all-star this year. As far as the relievers go, Brian Morris. I mean, what can we say about Brian Morris that hasn't been said already? 1.25 ERA. And Kimbrell's there as well with a 1.30 ERA. 
It's a shame that both these guys can't win reliever of the year, but surely one of them will. We'll just have to see. Brett Nicholas is a new face, 29-year-old catcher for the Texas Rangers, having a pretty solid season. So good for the Texas Rangers. Ike Davis is also there for the Rangers. Edwin's there. He's been uh, pretty darn consistent throughout this save. Luke Voigt, first-time All-Star, but Votto gets the start. Votto's doing very well. Uh, Mookie Betts gets the start at second base. MVP candidate this year? We'll just have to see, but man, really hot start for Mookie Betts on the year. He's up to 5 war already at the All-Star break. Uh, Ryan McMahon, I think this might be this his first All-Star game. Yep. 2017 All-Star Ryan McMahon. Man, those uh, Angels, they have McMahon, and they also have Mike Moustakis. They have uh, some riches in the infield, I tell you what. Brett Laurie is there, like always. He's a just a stud. I mean, I don't know I don't know what else to say about Brett Laurie at this point. Alenis Diaz makes the All-Star game for Toronto. Goodrum, he's great. Troy Tulowitzki in his first year with the Yankees. He's an All-Star again. Mike Trout's an all-star. He's going absolutely ballistic. It could be like an absolutely historic season for him if he keeps it up. J.D. Martinez is here. Dominic Brown is here. That silver slugger we're talking about. John Kemmer, who was the uh, rookie of the year last year, I believe, in the American League. Yep, he follows that up with a 2017 all-star appearance. National League, Bumgarner's going to start. He's been great. Chris Capuano at the age of 38 getting an all-star game appearance. Good for him. He's pitched some out of the rotation, some out of the bullpen. DeGrom's an all-star. Love to see that. DeGrom having a really good season, 2.55 ERA, 170 ERA plus. Could be like a six-war season for him if he keeps it up. Jose Fernandez also there with a 1.88 ERA. I'm a little surprised he's not getting this start. I mean, Bumgarner has a huge reputation, but uh, Jeremy Hefner, he's injured, but I mean, he's been great. You know, it's just like the last like four or five years, honestly. Mitch Horsek, uh, he's first time All Star for the Pittsburgh Pirates. Kershaw's an All Star. Medlin, Cy Young winner in 2015, All Star. Wade Miley, All Star. Price and Sale, All Stars. Sale uh, making his uh, National League All Star game debut because he's a Cincinnati Red now. Look at these relievers. Not too much standing out to me. Uh, Iglesias is on the uh, Pittsburgh Pirates, he's an All Star. Chris Perez, who we were talking about earlier, All-Star. Luke Roy's back in the All-Star game. I think he might have missed it uh, for a couple years. Yeah, he last All-Star game was 2014. Now he's an All-Star again in 2017. The other All-Stars, I mean, it's the it's exactly who you'd expect. It's Molina. It's Posey. Prince Fielder's in the All-Star game as a Philadelphia Philly. Matt Adams is here. Abreu's here. Trevor Story's here. There's Rendon. David Wright makes another All-Star game. He's having a really good season. He's continuing to add to what could be a serious Hall of Fame resume. Ryan Zimmerman's an all-star for the Atlanta Braves. Bregman's here. Bregman's had a phenomenal season. We'll talk about him in a second. Jason Hayward, Jock Peterson, uh, Christian Yelich. Really stacked, I think, center field position in that National League as far as the all-stars go. Stanton is here. He started to heat up after a really slow start. Winker's having a huge year. Cargo, same old, same old. He's doing great. Seager's there as well. So those are your all-star game rosters. Let's look at these statistical leaders around the league. So Mookie Betts is definitely a highlight so far with his 369 batting average. Still not quite seeing that power. Like we still feel like if he's like a 20 homer guy, that's where he really emerges. But his OPS is over a thousand because he's just a pure hitter. And, you know, he's playing second base for those Red Sox in this universe. He is a second baseman. He's not an elite corner outfielder necessarily like he is in real life, but he's on pace for nine more. And yet, Trout's stealing his thunder, no doubt about it. Trout with a 460 on base percentage and 712 slugging, seven and a half war. He has 2.5 more war than anyone else in the league. Betts is second, Laurie third, uh, JD Martinez fourth. He's having a great season, slugging 647 with a 413 on base percentage for those Houston Astros. Bregman is fifth and more. Padres need all the help they can get, but he's laying down a 345 real smooth. And then Ryan Zimmerman also having a great year. Yeah, Betts leaves hits. Everett Cabrera. Everett Cabrera likes to steal some bases. It's he's stolen 28 bases. He had a stretch there where uh, he led the league three times in a row. He's back at it with the Chicago White Sox. I believe she was leading off for the uh, Cubs at one point. So that's a look around the league. Basically, Mike Trout is going absolutely ballistic. Uh, Betts is having a really good year, but I just, man, it's going to be tough to catch Mike Trout. 
Jose Fernandez leads ERA by a pretty strong margin, so he could seriously be like a Cy Young candidate if he can keep this up. Kershaw leads F War. Mike Leake leads innings pitched, so he's gotten the most outs. You know, that's how I like to look at it. Mike Leake has gotten the most outs in the league. Bauer still leads strikeouts, but James Paxton now with Houston, uh, following close behind Kershaw, Degrom, Darvish, Newcomb. As we talked about, uh, Degrom earlier. This has probably been his best year so far in this save. Newcomb is just like a crazy stuff pitcher. Basically, he's 80 stuff with 30 control at the moment. So this is a guy. He's going to strike out a lot of guys. He's going to walk a lot of guys. It's not going to be easy to hit him. But yeah, 27th overall pick in that 2013 first-year player draft for the Giants. Luis Perez of the Toronto Blue Jays leads saves with 23. Also has a 2.14 ERA. I'm a little surprised he wasn't an all-star. But, um, you know, Kimbrell is in the American League. Brian Morris is in the American League. So that kind of makes sense. I think it's time for us to zoom ahead here to the trade deadline and see if there are any interesting transactions. We're here at the trade deadline. Not a lot of movement in the divisions, although I've noticed that the Pirates and Cardinals are currently tied. I have a suspicion that the Cardinals are going to come out on top here, but we'll just have to see. Diamondbacks are starting to creep back up. They're six games behind the Dodgers. Could be a wild card team either way. But yeah, uh, Pirates in a really strong position, though, because they are first in that wild card. If the Cardinals do indeed win the division, they could still very well compete for a wild card spot, and that would be their first playoff appearance in the simulation. That would be a lot of fun to see. Here's a glimpse at some trades that have gone down this season now that we're past the trade deadline. Actually, we're not past the trade deadline. Now we're past the trade deadline. Okay, there we go. So the Yankees acquired Eric Thames from the Blue Jays. It's an interesting move from the Blue Jays. They acquire prospects, but honestly, look at the division rankings, and Blue Jays are only four games back at the moment, so they could still be in contention, although they did kind of make a sell type of move with Eric Thames. Eric Thames hasn't been playing particularly well for the Yankees, but he was off to a decent start with the Blue Jays, and I feel like Thames is relevant because back in 2015, he led the league in OPS. He had a 161 OPS+. plus. He's been kind of ass since then, but there was a point where Eric Thames was putting together a monster season in this league and in this save. Michael Brantley, I noticed he was on the uh, Twins before, but I didn't realize that that was like a recent thing. Looks like this was a trade that went down on the 4th of July. Michael Brantley traded to Minnesota. Cleveland received Jermaine Mercedes. They received Michael Rucker. They received Craig Brooks. Mercedes appears to be sort of the prize of this deal. He um, had a pretty much like an average hitting year as a catcher in 2016, which has value. Now he's actually off to a very hot start with the Cleveland Spiders, so this could be kind of a win-win for them. Uh, Meanwhile, Michael Brantley, an average hitter so far, but a 350 on base percentage. He could come up big for a Twins team that is definitely in the hunt right now. We have a trade right here between the Tigers and the Yankees. This is a big-time one because Craig Kimbrell is going to be a New York Yankee. They've kind of traded for him just to make a run at it in these last two months here. The Detroit Tigers, I think, realized that they were kind of out of it. They're out of contention at the moment, and so they trade Kimbrell, who, uh, again, was on that one-year deal to the Yankees. In return, they get Trevor Richards, who's like a cost-controlled reliever, maybe even a starter for them. This guy, Ioannis Kiala, who has a strained abdominal muscle, and Shields. So, you know, it's a trade that makes sense. Basically, you have an elite reliever. You're not a great team. Trade them to a team in contention. That's the Yankees. They continue to get better. And then, you know, the Dodgers, not to be outdone, they orchestrate a swap for Sergio Romo. Sergio Romo had been having a really good year with the Reds as their closer, 2.14 ERA, 16 saves. But here's that trade. In return, Cincinnati receives prospects like Emerson Gibbs, Alan Valerio, Trey Cabbage, Jonathan Martinez, but that's a trade right there. The Dodgers go out, they get their closer. A couple trades here, not too interesting, but these were just during the trade deadline. So yeah, that's a look at some of the trades that have gone down. The highlights, obviously, Michael Brantley with the Twins, Kimbrell on the Tigers, and um, Sergio Romo on the Dodgers. So I've simulated here till the end of the regular season. I actually simulated to like the final day. I thought I was recording. I did my whole spiel. And unfortunately, I wasn't recording. So 
you missed my live reaction to some game 163s. Basically, there we had a couple game 163s there. The Astros defeated the Red Sox to grab the second wild card spot in the American League. The Braves defeated the Diamondbacks to grab the second uh, wild card spot in the National League. As far as the division champions, that whole picture was set. The Miami Marlins won 100 games in the National League East. It is just absolutely awesome to see. Jose Fernandez leading the charge, 1.87 ERA, 0.92 whip. 252 strikeout, 7.9 war. He is for sure a Cy Young candidate in the National League. Although, unfortunately, going forward for the Marlins, they'll have to do it without, I'm looking for him, um, Jorgen? I'm not sure about that first name, but Cavanario, the young Venezuelan starting pitcher, just 23 years old. 28 games started this year, 3.34 ERA. Suffered a torn labrum in his shoulder in September. So honestly, without Fernandez, the starting pitching isn't the greatest, but they do have some strong hitting. Yelich had a really good year, although he's day-to-day with a knee contusion. Stanton kind of got it together. Remember, he had a slow start to this season. He finishes with 4.6 war and 39 homers. Lonnie Chisenhall, I mean, acquired via trade with the Cleveland Spiders. They gave up A.J. Ramos, their closer, to make it happen. And honestly, Ramos did not have the best of years with Cleveland, so that gambit it works out great for the Miami Marlins. Lonnie Chisholm, a clear difference maker for them. 130 OPS plus and uh, 4.9 war. So that's just a look at your Miami Marlins. 100 game winners. Champions of the NL East. We're really happy to see that. I think this might be their first playoff berth we've seen. Cardinals won the Central, as I predict, uh, as I sort of predicted earlier. I really, really like this Cardinals team, guys. I, I don't know how to put it into words necessarily, but they have good pitching. Bum Garner, uh, Carlos Martinez, Ian Kennedy. They have others besides these guys like Wayne Wright's been coming out and pitching for them, doing pretty well. This guy, Sofredo Garcia, is really a starting pitcher for them. It just so happens their rotation looks like this because the season is over. They're starting to set up like a playoff rotation. But yeah, they have, uh, you know, Molina, not the greatest of second halves for him. He had a really good first half, was an all-star. But Aaron Judge hit 30 homers. He's slowly becoming uh, the Aaron Judge we know and love, although this may be uh, closer to his peak. I hope to see him have a monster year, but I'm not so sure. Matt Adams had a monster year. Cleanup hitter, hit 54 home runs, also led the league in hits with 202 or 212, led the league in uh, slugging, National League, that is, with uh, 648. Huge year for Matt Adams. And Matt Holliday, I, I just love it. I love Matt Holiday in the safe. I mean, what a joy it is to watch this guy. OPS over 1,000, 6.4 war. You look at his just career stats at the moment. He's basically a 70 war hitter. 146 OPS plus is a right-handed hitter for his career. I mean, that makes him one of the better right-handed hitters since integration, period. Really fun to watch Matt Holiday throughout this safe. He'll be 38 this winter. So love Matt Holiday. Love this Cardinals team. I think they're going to make some noise in the playoffs. Dodgers won the West. I, you know, the Diamondbacks were creeping up. They were creeping up. They were creeping up. But they ended up missing the playoffs, and the Dodgers were able to hold them off. Uh, Kershaw, really good year. He's going to be the main competition for Jose Fernandez for sure because he has more innings pitched, more strikeouts, more wins. His ERA isn't as good, but his peripherals are better. So he actually has a 9.9 uh, F4, which is like two better than Fernandez has. Justin Masterson, also a really good year. Corey Seager played 140 games. We were a little bit worried about injuries earlier, but he had a really nice year. Jack Peterson, another really good year for him. This is his second really, really strong year in a row. And yeah, I've kind of liked Ryan Braun settling into like that leadoff hitter role for them. I just feel like it's, it's just a solid fit, and he's still going in this league. So there you go. That's the NL West. In the AL West, the Astros did grab that wild card spot. They defeated the Red Sox 8-4 to for game 163. J.D. Martinez, of course, uh, a big-time hitter for them in this. 47 home runs. That's a lot of home runs, J.D. Martinez. 47 home runs. Eric Castro, who was, uh, I believe, Rookie of the Year at one point. No, he was just in contention for it. Um, He hits 44 home runs of his own, so a lot of home runs here. James Paxton has definitely been key. He gives them sort of stability in the rotation, 3.52 ERA. Some of the young guys like Aaron Nola, who's 24, still waiting for him to really put it together for a full season. That's a look at your Astros. They're in the playoffs. I think this is maybe the first time they've been in the playoffs uh, throughout this save. White Sox grab a wild card spot as well. Uh, I think Brandon Woodruff might just be your AL Cy Young winner. 20 wins, 2.64 ERA, whip below one. We'll just have to see there, but this has been a fun White Sox team. Johnny Cueto had a solid year for them as well. Keep in mind, this is like a higher grade offensive environment. So a 3.94 ERA is equivalent to a 121 ERA plus. 2017 is, you know, one of the juicier juiced ball years uh, we've seen. Although 2019, I think, was the peak. Roberto Ramos was acquired via trade. 
from the Los Angeles Dodgers. Remember that trade? Sent David Hernandez over. Roberto Ramos hit 44 home runs for those White Sox playing first base. So I said, eh, maybe he's a full-time first baseman. Nope. He's pretty great. So that's just a look at the Chicago White Sox. They're in the playoffs. We love the Twins. We do love the Twins. Tanaka, really good year. Mike Leake, really, really good year. Had 7.0 F4. So him and Tanaka were both huge. Their pitching is definitely a strength. They also have uh, Michael Brantley, which is really cool. So yeah, that's just a look at your uh, Minnesota Twins. They did not win like 100 games or what was projected of them. Uh, I know people are going to ask about uh, Lincecum. Lincecum splitting time between the rotation and bullpen. 4.62 ERA. Okay, that seems bad, but 105 ERA plus. Actually, technically still above average because this was just a high offensive environment type of year. You're about to see it with one particular player. Yankees win the AL East. It seems like they've sort of taken that over from the um, the the uh, Rays, who were winning it kind of perennially earlier in this year. We're rooting for the Blue Jays. They didn't get there. Red Sox didn't get there either, which is really unfortunate. They lost that game 163. Mookie Betts had a really, really good year. His best year so far in this simulation, 2017. 18 home runs, 14 steals, 954 OPS, 147 OPS plus, 7.5 war. I feel bad for the Red Sox. Matt Latos definitely added to their pitching like he comes over from Cincinnati. You know, he's immediately their ace, but they need more pitching if they want to get to the playoffs, I think. That's just uh, an unfortunate truth. But yeah, there you go. One more team to talk about and really one more guy to talk about. I mean, it's special. It's really special year for Mike Trout. 206 hits, 49 home runs, 47 stolen bases. So he doesn't just go 40-40. He almost goes 50-50. 353 batting average, 446 on base, 698 slugging, 1144 OPS, 201 OPS plus, 12.4 war. Ladies and gentlemen, this is not just his fourth consecutive MVP award. This is one of the greatest, if not the greatest seasons in MLB history. Simple as that. Mike Trout going huge. The Angels are back in the playoffs. And hey, maybe they'll succeed. Maybe they'll go on a run, win that World Series. Big year for Mike Moustakis as well. Ryan McMahon had a good year. This is a really strong lineup. They have 897 runs scored, which is second best. It's all about the pitching. Garrett Richards has been good for them. Can they put the pitching together? Can they just make it click in October? And also, I should mention the Braves. They grab a wild card spot. They won the World Series a couple years ago. Trudoslovich, OBP king, back with a 398 OBP and 109 walks. He's been a lot of fun to watch. Freddie Freeman, he missed some time. He only played 50 games, but he's back for the playoffs, so that could loom huge. Ryan Zimmerman, really good year. Maybe his best year in a Braves uniform so far, and he's been in a Braves uniform for a while. This was his fifth year with the Braves. He's having a very good career. Could be borderline Hall of Famer if he keeps it up. He's only 33, already up to 2,000 hits, 57 at 4, 300 home runs. If he keeps it up, could be in the Hall of Fame. Jason Hayward, good year, 8.1 more. Actually looks like that led the National League. So way to go for the Jay Hay kid. Like I said, War Machine, Alex Wood, good year. Uh, Chris Medlin out for four weeks, though. So they're going to have to do this playoff run without Chris Medlin. That kind of stinks. So there you go. That's your look around the league. Playoff picture is set. Let's talk about the stat leaders. Stat leaders. So obviously Mike Trout basically leads everything. Average, on-base, slugging. And if you're an expert on arithmetic, you'll know that if someone leads OBP and slugging, they're probably going to lead OPS, probably going to happen. So there you go, Mike Trout with an 11.44 OPS, best in the league by about 120 points. Sano second, he had a monster year, 51 home runs for Miguel Sano. David Wright, uh, day-to-day with knee inflammation. Unfortunately, the Diamondbacks do miss the playoffs, but David Wright had a great year. Here's a look at his career stats, now up to 77 war, 77 career war for David Wright, 140 career OPS plus, and playing great defense at third base the whole time, 2,300 hits, 317 home runs, looking like a Hall of Famer. I kind of called it at the beginning of the series, I was like, maybe he finishes out the simulation as a clear first ballot Hall of Famer. I don't know if he's first ballot yet, but he's looking pretty great. Mike Trout, 201 OPS plus. It's really hard to believe. Your war leaders, Trout, Sano. Brett Laurie, who's just a freak every year, Jason Hayward, David Wright, and Jock Peterson. So those are your leaders. David Dahl and Mike Trout, by the way, were tied for the lead in steals. So Mike Trout, you can kind of pretend he's the leader in steals as well. As far as the pitching goes, Fernandez, we talked about this, Fernandez versus Kershaw right now. Jose Fernandez, 25 years old, 1.87 ERA, 
um, 202 innings pitch. So he's he's won an ERA, but Kershaw's got him beat in some other places. Kershaw's got him beat in F War. He's got him beat. He has like about 23 more innings pitched. He has more wins. He has more strikeouts. It's going to be an interesting race for sure. Brandon Woodruff, I feel like, is going to be your AL Cy Young winner. I would like to see that. David Price, Wade Miley, Jeremy Hefner. Um, Jeremy Hefner missed a couple starts, but he kind of got off easy. 29 games started, 2.91 ERA. Look at Jeremy Hefner. Career 3.02 ERA. Look at him go for those Mets. You thought DeGrom was going to do this? I mean, DeGrom had a good year. No doubt about it. DeGrom had a good year. He finished fourth in strikeouts. This was his best year for the Mets. But man, Jeremy Hefner, really, really impressive in this save. Richard Rodriguez of the White Sox lead saves. And uh, Brian Morris, in case you know you were on Brian Morris watch right here, that ERA, it's below two. It's below two. Brian Morris, pretty darn good at baseball in this save. So there you go. Those are your league leaders uh, among pitchers, among hitters. Now we're ready to start the playoffs. Who is going to be the World Series champion in 2017? We are here in the playoff tree. We are going to start with a couple wild card matchups, winner take all, Astros versus White Sox, Braves versus Pirates. We have some teams that we haven't seen much of in the postseason, like the Pirates, like the Astros. I would like to see them succeed here, but we'll just have to see what happens. Braves win, so they're going to advance to face the Marlins in Division Series and in the American League. The White Sox win, so didn't exactly get what I asked for, although the White Sox definitely haven't seen too much of them either, so I'd like to see them make a run. That'd be fun to see. Twins and Angels, these are two teams I really like, so it's unfortunate that they're pitted against each other. I'm sure a lot of people are going to be rooting for the Marlins as well. So here we go. Here's your division series. Looks like the Cardinals and Marlins jump out to a quick 2-0 lead. Meanwhile, the White Sox and Angels win their respective game once. Um, But the Twins and Yankees, they tie it back up. So it's 1-1s over here. It's 2-0s over here. Let's see if the Marlins and Cardinals can advance. Can they complete sweeps? Uh, Cardinals complete the sweep of the Dodgers. So that ends the Dodgers playoff run. Miami Marlins up 2-1 on the Braves. uh, And that's going to go to a game five, it appears. Meanwhile, the White Sox and the Angels, they add on, uh, grab 2-1 leads. So here we go. Some elimination games. Oh, here we go. We're going to have some Game 5s, it looks like. Game 5s over here, Game 5 over here, Game 5 over here. Who's going to advance? Only Cardinals have booked a trip to the championship series so far. So the Braves advance against the Marlins. They come back. I think they were down a little bit there. They might have reverse swept right there. I think the Marlins were up 2-0. Am I crazy? Um, Yankees and White Sox, Twins and Angels. Who will advance? It's the Yankees, and it's the Twins. So let's meet our championship series teams. The Braves are here making a run out of that wild card spot. They defeat the uh, champion Marlins, who won 10 more games than them. Way to go, Marlins. Braves had to win a game 163 to get here, had to win a uh, wild card game to get here. So they just don't fear God at this point. Zimmerman, huge year for the Braves. One of the best, uh, maybe the best we've seen in a, uh, his Braves uniform. I feel like I might be repeating myself there. Freddie Freeman missed some time, but those are look at the Braves. Alex Wood in the rotation, going to be key for them because I'm not sure if they have the starting pitching otherwise. St. Louis Cardinals, we really like the St. Louis Cardinals team. Bumgarner is a great asset for them to have, and they have some serious power with Holiday and Adams. They even have Matt Carver. They got three mats in a row. I, I really like this Cardinals team. I feel like it could be their year. We'll just have to see. Minnesota Twins, playoff rotation of Leak, Tanaka, Anibal Sanchez, and Phil Hughes at the moment. They're a fun team. The CPU really liked them at the beginning of the year. And the Yankees, they just keep adding guys. They keep adding the big free agents. Robinson Cano is out for three months with a, a partially torn labrum. Who's playing second base for them? Ben Zobris. That's a great thing about positional versatility. Ben Zobris moves from right field to second base. Hunter Pence they have, apparently. He's playing right field. He looks like he was really good as like a part-time player for them this year. Now he's a full-time player going into the postseason. They've just got names you recognize, you know. They got Zobrist. Um, I mean, Hunter Dozier's been massive for them, even if he's not a name you recognize. Tulo had a good year. And Joey Votto, this was a great year for Joey Votto. 400 on base percentage and 39 home runs. This Yankees team is strong. They had the best record uh, in MLB with 101 wins. Let's see what happens. Okay, so Yankees grab a 2-0 lead in the championship series over the Twins. Uh Uh-oh, Twins fans. Is this PTSD? You're like, man, this always happens to us. We always lose to Yankees. Braves versus Cardinals. They're tied up. Braves grab game three. 
Meanwhile, uh, ooh, Yankees grab a 3-0 lead, and it's a tie 2-2 between the Braves and the Cardinals. Can the Yankees complete the sweep? Yes, they can. So the Yankees have swept the Twins. They advance to the World Series. Braves, meanwhile, have a 3-2 lead against the Cardinals. Let's see what happens there. Oh, and the Braves advance in six games. So it's a rematch of the 1998 World Series between the Atlanta Braves and the New York Yankees. Who's going to come out on top? Braves won a World Series a couple years ago. Let's let's get uh, some confirmation there on that. 2015. So they're 2015 champions. Yankees, I don't think, have won a World Series in this save. So their last series was in 2009. Who will come out on top? Braves win game one. Yankees win game two. Braves win game three. They're tied up two apiece right here going into game five. Crucial. And the Yankees take a 3-2 lead. So here we go. And the series is going to go back to the Bronx for these last two games. Can the Yankees get a win in front of their home crowd? Let's find out. Yes, they can. Yankees in six. The New York Yankees are your World Series champions in 2017. Way to go, guys. Felix Hernandez has himself another ring as he continues to add to a Hall of Fame career. That's his second ring. He won one in 2013 with the uh, Mariners as well. Sabathia's got himself a ring. Good for CC Sabathia. Votto's got a ring. Tulo's got a ring. There you go. Some big names getting rings for sure. Let's check out how this uh, series ended up. Game six, the winning pitcher was indeed CC Sabathia. So a career-defining moment for CC Sabathia. Gets a World Series at the age of 37. Craig Kimbrell gets the save against his former team. Remember, the Yankees traded for Craig Kimbrell right around that trade deadline. Definitely came up big for them as he completes the... Uh, the playoff run. Series MVP, Hunter Dozier. <laughs> it's incredible to see. Like I I think I said this before, but Hunter Dozier really struggled in 2021 as a full-time player for the Royals. He's really struggled ever since he signed that extension. But man, Hunter Dozier in this game, really, really good for the New York Yankees. Career 134 OPS plus. He has a six worst season this year, seven worst season the year before. And now he's a World Series MVP at the age of 26. Good for the New York Yankees. They're the champions. And uh, yeah, it's time for us to move on to the offseason. The 2017 offseason is going to begin with the first-year player draft. That's just how the schedule has worked out this year. So first-year player draft and then end-of-season awards. The Royals are going to pick first this year. The Royals get the first pick. They went 53-109 and on the year, so it's not the Padres. Padres pick second. I call that improvement. Padres have picked first a lot. Now they pick second. Brewers third, Spiders fourth, Giants fifth is the New York Yankees who will pick last, not because they're World Series champions, but because they were regular series, uh, regular season champions. They had the most wins in the regular season. Tigers have two first-round picks in this one because they did not sign their first-round pick in last year's draft. Don't know who that was, but that's how this draft is going to work. I want to talk to you guys about this draft pool. So as the simulation runs along, I've noticed that the draft classes tend to get weaker, and uh, Alex, who helped set this up for me, he basically said that that was going to happen. So this was the first year where I've really done something about it. I've intervened, and I've made some pretty heavy edits just to sort of promote players that I think are very good or very exciting in real life. So here you are. Wander Franco, he did not come in looking like this. This is a Wander Franco personally edited by me. I looked at it for a whole almost one minute, and I decided I think this is what Wander Franco looks like. So that's my approximation of Wander Franco. Rado Perdomo, big fan of his in real life. That's what I think of him. Brendan Davis, Jared Kelnick, Andy Page, Christian Robinson, they're all in this draft. I edited Trey Harris. I edited Joey Bart. I edited Al Thomas. I edited... Uh, Stephen Kwan, this is what my interpretation of Stephen Kwan looks like. There you go. Um, also did that with some starting pitchers. Uh, Grayson Rodriguez, I think, is supposed to be the best player in this draft class. I was just sorting through the names. He's a huge prospect right now, 18 years old. This is what I edited him to look like. He was Originally, these guys were all like two-star guys. Trevor Rogers did the same for him. He had a really good year for the Marlins last year in real life. Aaron Ashby, big fan of his. This is what my Aaron Ashby interpretation looks like. Chris Bubich edited him. Josiah Gray edited him. Tark Skubal edited him. So yeah, I've kind of, you know, in an attempt to sort of balance this out, made these players better than they came by default. So I just thought you guys should know that. 
Granted, you know, when you look at this Wander Franco, for example, this is probably about what he looks like if you boot up the game in a new save for like the 2021 season in terms of his potential. But just in this historical game node, he's not coming through at max power. And this is what he's going to look like. What could happen, I'm afraid, first of all, he has high adaptability and high work ethic. And then he's also might be hard to sign. So what could happen is that he gets drafted, right? He doesn't sign, and then he comes back like a year later, and his potential stats are even better, and he becomes like so overpowered that he becomes like a 15 war player or something. That could happen. Uh, however, I'm willing to risk it for the sake of our entertainment. So there you go. There's Wander Franco. Just so you know, I edited this draft class uh, by hand with about probably like uh, 10 or 15 players or so, just ones that interested me. So there you go. Let's get this draft on the way. So, of course, first pick goes to Kansas City, and I think I have a feeling, you know, I think I have a hunch of who they're going to pick. I think it's going to be this fellow right here. But let's see, Kansas City picks Wander Franco, so they'll have to sign him, but Wander Franco is going to be a Kansas City Royal in this universe. San Diego Padres, they've had a lot of chances to get talented players. They picked Bregman first. They picked uh, Fernando Tatis Jr. first. They picked Keston Hura first. Who will they pick second? It is going to be... Trevor Rogers. Padres picked Trevor Rogers, so they add a pitcher this time. They've added a lot to their infield, so it's good to see them draft a pitcher. Milwaukee picks. They pick Andy Page. Andy Page is a big time uh, power prospect for the Dodgers. I edited this one for him. Yeah, there's Andy Page. Uh, Cleveland picking now. They pick Perdomo. I love Perdomo. He's a prospect for the uh, Diamondbacks right now. Uh, Ronald Perdomo. So I gave him 70 eye discipline potential. And the reason I did that is because A, he walks a lot, and B, there's a very uh, classic story where Perdomo was in, I think, like Fall League, and the automatic ball strike system um, called Strike 3 on him, and he disagreed with it. And while walking past the computer that called him out, he flipped it the bird. I think that's a great story. I think that says a lot about Robert Perdomo. Uh, who's going to pick Grayson Rodriguez? Might be San Francisco. Let's see. They will. So they pick up G-Rod. Uh, interesting that the Orioles picked next, so they could have ended up with G-Rod. Orioles pick Christian Robinson. Um, just a Chris Robinson is just like a freak athlete. He's from the Bahamas, also in the Diamondback system. Uh, legal troubles have kind of uh, plagued like his last uh, year, year and a half or so. But I'd love to see him get uh, his career back on track. Philadelphia, they picked Brennan Davis. Also mental health stuff for Christian Robinson. I should mention Brennan Davis goes to the Phillies. Uh, Donovan Williams. I don't know much about Donovan Williams. He was actually one of the few players I did not edit. He came in looking pretty good, so I was like, all right, Donovan Williams, we'll just leave you like that. He's picked by the. Uh, um, the uh, Rangers, right? Is that right? Last pick was Rangers selection, Donovan Williams. Okay. Uh, and now uh, the Mariners will pick, and they'll pick Jared Kelnick. Hey, look at that, Jared Kelnick. He's a Seattle Mariner. I kind of like that. And uh, here we go, current 10th pick for the Detroit Tigers. They picked Jonathan India. I edited Jonathan India a bit. I maybe could have gone a little bit more aggressive there considering how good he was this past year. But there you go. There's your top 10. We'll finish out the rest of the draft. So not the deepest draft. I don't think there's going to be like a ton of names you recognize, especially once we get out of the first round. But I added it just to make sure we had a decent amount of top-tier guys at the top of the class to help turn around, you know, the luck of the Royals or the Padres or the Brewers. Hopefully they'll benefit from some of these edited players. Hopefully the Royals can sign Wander Franco and we can actually see him make the majors before this uh, series is over. But yes, given that this is the 2017 draft class and you're seeing guys that you know were signed in like 2017 as international amateurs or like 2018 first year players, you know, you're not seeing a lot of like current big leaguers starting about now. And I think that's going to be the pattern that holds going forward. But here you go. Here's your. Uh, you know, first few rounds, you're going to see some names you recognize. George Valera, if you're like a prospect guy specifically, so Valera's going to the uh, Rays. I see Travis Swaggerty. I see Jordan Adams. We're scrolling up here now. We're in the third now, I, the third round. I see Steel Walker. I see Kyle Wright, um, but not that Kyle Wright. This guy's 34. Goodness gracious. Okay, weird. Um, I see Cal Raleigh. Going to the Red Sox, Jeremy Pena going to the uh, Rockies. I did not edit those. Seth Beer is going to be on the Cincinnati Reds. Blaze Alexander, who's an OOTP legend for me, is going to join the Texas Rangers. But yeah, your first round looked like this. Um, let's see here. The Rays picked Aaron Ashby. The Mets picked Joey Bart. Nationals picked Stephen Kwan. Athletics picked Griffin Canning. Griffin Canning was probably the best pitcher that I didn't edit. Um, so he came in looking actually decent. 
Uh, Alec Thomas went to the Blue Jays. Josiah Gray, who I did edit, but maybe could have gotten. I think this is pretty fair, honestly, for him, to be honest with you. Josiah Gray went to the Pirates. Nico Horner went to the Twins, didn't edit him. Chris Bubich, I did edit, went to the Dodgers. So there you go. There's your first round, and um, yeah, I did my best with that draft class. This is reaching a point where, you know, these guys drafted aren't going to make the hugest impacts. They're not going to be around in the big leagues for a long time, but they still, you know, a lot of them carry uh, weight on their shoulders, perhaps none more than Wander Franco, because if the Royals can sign him, who knows? We'll see what happens. You know, a couple guys that may have been victims of this draft class, I guess, deflation, one of them would be Acuna. Acuna spent his uh, last season, his first season in the majors with the Boston Red Sox. He still had a two-war season despite the fact that he is definitely nerfed. And another guy who is nerfed is going to be Juan Soto. Although he still looks decent ratings-wise, it's it's not it's not the Juan Soto we know and love. Juan Soto is on the Astros. He's played a couple years in the minors. Um, he hasn't developed in his overall, he's still like a half star there, but if his power develops, then yeah, he's going to be probably an above average player, but he's not the Juan Soto we know and love. You know, I know I just made Juan Franco a potential future superstar. I could do the same to Juan Soto if I really wanted to, but I don't want to get uh, that intervention-y. I feel more comfortable doing it now in 2017 where, you know, the majority of those guys picked aren't even going to see the majors in the simulation just because they're simply too young and they're not good enough. So it's time for awards season, but this headline definitely caught my eye. Mike Moustakis just got absolutely paid, oh my goodness, by the Los Angeles Angels. Seven years, $284 million. Like, what is that AAV? That's like, that's over $40 million AAV. Absolutely insane. And he has an opt-out after 2021. Can't imagine he's going to use that. I've never seen an AAV this high. Uh, an OTP, at least not at this point in this save in 2017. Goodness gracious, what an insane contract for Mike Moustakis. He's been really, really good, don't get me wrong, but it's not like he's their best player. Mike Trout's their best player. What's Trout's contract situation? They had him, um, okay, they actually signed him the previous year to 8250 I mean, honestly, that's looking like a total bargain. So there you go. Angels paying a lot of money to Mike Moustakis. That just caught my eye. He's not going to reach free agency. So here you are. Uh, let's start with the um, uh, where's the uh, where's the batting titles? Hold on, real quick. Let me get the batting titles real quick. It is going to be uh, Trout winning a batting title. We knew that, and uh, Matt Holliday wins a batting title. He hit 346. All right, award time. American League Gold Gloves. Salvador Perez picks up a gold glove. That ends the reign of terror for Matt Weeders. Although I think Weeders was traded to a National League team. But yes, Salvador Perez gets himself a gold glove uh, for the Kansas City Royals. It hasn't been the best hitting from him. He had one decent season of hitting where he hit 20 home runs and had a 114 OPS plus in 2016. But Salvi uh, gets himself a gold glove. Scooter Jeanette won at first base for the Detroit Tigers. That's a new name right there. Scooter Jeanette uh, had a really good season, it looks like, at first base for the Detroit Tigers. Jed Jerko also gets his first gold glove. Uh, Oakland Athletics. Playing second base, Brett Laurie, monster, 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 and he's won uh, five straight gold gloves at third base. He's crazy. I mean, look at these numbers. I mean, like I keep saying this, I've said it a million times, he's Machado, basically. They turn him into Machado. Uh, Addison Russell wins another gold glove at shortstop. That's his third, including a second in a row. Uh, not a great hitter, though. More of a glove guy. More of a glove guy, for sure. Raimel Tapia wins one in left field for the Cleveland Spiders. I think we saw him... Uh, end up with the Cleveland Spiders. Uh, well, he's been on there for a while. Okay. I feel like his name popped up in one of these episodes. Can't remember which one it was. Uh, Mike Trout, he is a gold glove winner in center field. He's also going to win pretty much everything this year. Just a quick heads up if I had to guess. But um, yeah, he's running out of space in his accolade section right here because uh, that's his uh, third straight gold glove in center field. And Jay Bruce in right field. I mean, he's perennial at this point. Jay Bruce... Fifth straight right, uh, fifth straight right field gold glove for Seattle Mariners. Um, consistent like league average hitter, basically winning gold gloves in right field. Here's National League. Matt Weeders, okay, yeah, there he is. He's on the Diamondbacks, and that's his. Boop, 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 boop. He's won a gold glove in every year of this save. Um, so that's his, and it's his seventh consecutive. So Matt Weeders, defensive stud as a catcher. Um, that ends Molina's reign of terror in the National League. We were curious to see, you know, Molina on his run, who was going to win. Matt Weeders wins. 
Brandon Belt wins at first base. He's won a few. That's his third. Nick Ahmed wins at second base. He also did that last year. Arenado wins at third base. Arenado's won five gold gloves in a row now. Um, you know, the hitting has not been there as consistently for him. He's not as good a hitter in the save as he is in real life, but they definitely nailed uh, the defense. He's a sick defender. Honestly, could play shortstop just based on these ratings. I'm looking at him. Um, but they do have Trevor Story for that if they want that now that Tulo's gone. Brendan Ryan. Oh, Brendan Ryan. Well, he's the, sh- he's the gold glover for the Rockies. So Story stays at second base. I mean, this is one of the greatest defensive infields of all time for the Colorado Rockies because, okay, yeah, they got a Breu. I mean, he's not bad. He's 60 rated at first base, but Trevor Story's playing second base for them. Goodness gracious, look at that. And then they have Arenado third and Brendan Ryan playing shortstop. Yeah, this is one of the greatest uh, defensive infields uh, of all time. Simple as that. It's pretty special to see. Jason Hayward wins in center field. He led the National League in war with 8.1. Here's what his career looks like at the moment. Um, just an absolute stud. And Giancarlo wins again in right field. That's Giancarlo's fourth gold glove in a row in right field. So he's been uh, defense has been a big part of his game throughout this save. Richard Rodriguez wins reliever of the year. Brian Morris gets runner-up. We know we, lo- we love Brian Morris in this house, but you know what? Richard Rodriguez, I think, might have deserved it. He had 87 strikeouts and nine walks, led the league with 37 saves. National League reliever of the year is a fellow by the name of Kender Viegas. I don't know Kender Viegas. He is, in fact, a real person. Pretty much everyone you see here is going to be a real person, so don't worry about that. Uh, 69 innings pitched, 33 saves, 2.22 ERA. He had a really good year. Cameron Smith of the Pirates and Christian Castillo, also of the Pirates, getting some uh, getting some love, getting some first place votes. Cameron Smith was a 17th round pick in that first year player draft, so he's really emerged. Had a really good season, 76 innings pitched, 2.25 ERA. He was an All Star. Christian Castillo was not an All Star. Um, he started nine games out of the rotation as well, but kind of a bulkier relief guy. He pitched 114 innings total. That's Christian Castillo. Uh, Silver Slugger Rewards, Wilson Ramos wins for the Twins. Not sure if I've said Wilson Ramos' name yet, but he gets a Silver Slugger playing catcher for the Twins. Votto wins for the Yankees. That's his first Silver Slugger since 2013, back when he was still playing for the Reds. Mookie Betts, this was a big kind of breakout year for Mookie Betts. He'd have good years before that, but he leads the league in hits, 7.5 war, 147 OPS plus in 2017. Gets a silver slugger at second base. Sano wins at third base. Sano honestly had a season that would win MVP a lot of years, if not for Mike Trout. He hit 51 home runs as a third baseman. That's pretty crazy. And his and his defense at third base is really good in this save. Like, you know, he wasn't really able to hack it necessarily in real life at that position, but in this one, really, really good. I think he's he suits uh third base long term. Tulo wins at shortstop. Great year for Tulo in his first year away from course, playing in Yankee Stadium. Dominic Brown repeats. Um, he wins a Silver Slugger in left field this time. Okay, I thought he I thought he won in right field the previous year, but uh, Dominic Brown really big pickup for the Twins. Mike Trout wins in center field. Obvious. Domingo Santana wins in right field. He's had a few good seasons back to back here for the Houston Astros. They have guys like Domingo Santana, J.D. Martinez. Um, I was speaking of the devil, not the strongest defenders necessarily, although actually the game quite likes Domingo in right field. So there you go. But, um, yeah, some, some, uh, actually some, uh, pretty good hitting in Houston, to be honest with you, some real power national league, silver sluggers, Posey gets one. Posey had a really good year. He hit 341. He had 20 home runs. He had six war. Uh, this was a really good season for Buster Posey. He grabs a silver slugger, Matt Adams, uh, 54 home runs, 212 hits, led the league in slugging. National League, that is, 6.6 war. I mean, there's a chance he wins MVP, honestly. I haven't thought too much about that MVP race. I really like Jock this year, too, and Hayward and guys like that. Story had a good year in Colorado. He's still in Colorado. Although, honestly, even though he's a Silver Slugger winner at second base, and these raw numbers are really good, once you park adjust, it was only 108 OPS+. Plus, so, not dissing him, but he's had better years than that. It's 125 WRC plus, though. That's interesting. That's a huge gap between those numbers. David Wright wins at third base. That's his uh, fourth silver slugger and uh, second in a row. So he won in 2007, 2008. Now he's won in 2016, 2017. Here's his career stats in MLB. Way to go, David Wright. That's all I can say. Uh, I think I'm sure there's some people really pleased with that, even though he's been an Arizona Diamondback. Alex Bregman wins at shortstop. 
Um, did he, in fact, play shortstop this year? I know he'd been playing a lot of, like, third base for them. Yep, he played 119 games at shortstop this year. Um, hopefully Tatis comes up next year and Bregman can slide over to third, and hopefully also, like, the Padres will not stink. Matt Holliday wins in left field. He just keeps it going. This guy is a machine. Jack Peterson wins in center. Man, I tell you what, Jack Peterson could have ran away with this um, MVP if he just had... Uh, like a little bit better year like even like this year I think 2016 if he repeats that 2016 he could have won uh, we'll have to see though Giancarlo uh, Silver Slugger and right field so he's got Silver Slugger he's got Gold Glove Rookie of the Year's Luke Voigt we were hyping him up preseason he hit 51 home runs in 150 games he didn't even play the full season in the majors so that's really crazy from Luke Voigt unanimous AL MVP McMahon also had a really good year for the Angels Taylor Lindsay on the Royals let's see him uh, 100 games played. Acuna gets some votes, and Richard Rodriguez. I'm surprised he didn't get more votes, considering he that he is the uh, uh, reliever of the year. National League Rookie of the Year is Dansby Swanson. Way to go, Dansby Swanson. Dansby Swanson puts down uh, pretty much just the league average year. Must have been another year with a weaker sort of class in the National League among the rookies. This guy, Jose Zapata, got votes. Jose Medina gets votes. A couple relievers. And uh, Nathaniel Causey. Uh, I don't even know how that gets rookie of the year votes. Goodness gracious. I mean, 346 on base percentage, though. So, uh, all right. Why not? Um, Tony Rocha. Rocha? Don't quite know who this character is, but he's been managing the New York Yankees. He is the manager of the year of the American League, and he's also a World Series champion. And uh, Ray Billingsley, the manager of the Miami Marlins, is the National League manager of the year. Now it's time for the Cy Young Awards. American League, it's Brandon Woodruff, and it's unanimous. I think we predicted that. Brandon Woodruff, way to go. He grabs the Cy Young Award. He was the third overall pick in that 2013 first-year player draft, and he filled in so admirably for Chris Sale, who has moved on. So that's big for the White Sox to have an ace they can count on. Tanaka gets foes. Uh, Matt Latos, Mike Leake, James Paxton. Felix Fernandez still gets one despite that 4.05 ERA. Uh, they must have respected his 216 strikeouts and also his new ring. Uh, Clayton Kershaw, split decision wins uh, that um, Cy Young in the National League. We're rooting for Jose Fernandez for sure, but he'll settle for runner-up. But yeah, that's fun to see Kershaw and Fernandez dueling for uh, Cy Young awards. I feel like we were sort of robbed of that. I feel like there's a, a you know a universe where uh, that definitely could have happened, uh, or at least happened perennially, I should say. Uh, Clayton Kershaw, 226 innings pitched, uh, 20 wins, 264 strikeouts, led the league with 9.9 F4 among pitchers. Fernandez had the better ERA. Bumgarner gets third. Gio Gonzalez, this was Gio Gonzalez's best year in a while. Um, He's been pitching for the Nationals this whole time. He's been Mr. Consistent for them, but this was his best year in a while. Uh, Jacob deGrom finishing fifth. That's really exciting to see. Medlin got votes. Wade Miley, Justin Masterson, Kershaw's teammate. So now it's time for the American League MVP. Place your bets. I have a pretty good feeling it's going to be Mike Trout. Unanimous. Not even close. This is one of the greatest seasons in MLB history. I mean, this is like this is the closest thing to Bonds. Um, you know, Bonds like 2001, 2000. It's that level. That's how good he was. It's unbelievable. It's it's just right up there with any season in MLB history. Miguel Sano finishes second. He had a huge year, would have won MVP a lot of years. Mike Moustakis, who just got paid, Mike Trout's teammate, um, he finishes third. J.D. Martinez, Betts, Brett Laurie, Tulo, Vado. We didn't talk about Gallo, but he hit 51 home runs. So we should do sort of a Joey Gallo. First of all, Joey Gallo just turned 24. What's going on with Joey Gallo in this save? Because he got started at 18, just kind of a quirk of this uh, game mode. He had one of the best age 18 seasons in MLB history, one of the best age 19 seasons in MLB history. And even though I wasn't sure if he was going to continue to develop, um, he actually had a career year in 2017. So he has gotten a little bit better over time. But yes, Joey Votto is 24 years old. Not Joey Votto, oh my goodness. Joey Gallo is 24 years old. Um, He has about 30 F4. Uh, He has 221 career home runs. So it's possible that if you simmed out like the next 20 years, like this is a contender for like home run king, basically. Like he could chase down Bonds if he keeps this up. So that's fun with Joey Gallo. Uh, Brandon Woodruff got votes. Santana, Voigt, Dominic Brown, Hunter Dozier, Jonathan Scope, Chris Bryant, Adam Duvall. We should talk about Scope a little bit. Uh, Scope had a really nice year for the Baltimore Orioles. Chris Bryant has been so up and down with these Houston Astros. Like It looked like he was just decline, decline, decline ever since a great rookie year. And you know what? 2017 has a pretty good year. And that was key, too, because uh, the Astros made the playoffs. So that was that was pretty key there. Uh, National League, 
MVP, Matt Adams. Wow, Matt Adams, way to go. And he's looking at 80 home run power potential. He hits 54 this year. You know, I, I, I just didn't put much thought in that. I was like, well, Trout's got it locked up, but I didn't think much about the National League race. But Matt Adams gets 28 first-place votes. Kershaw gets a first-place vote. Jose Fernandez gets a first-place vote. And then, you know, you're running up as Jock Peterson, who had a great year. Uh, Hayward had a great year. I might have been tempted to give it to Hayward if I were a voter in real life. I'm not sure. Zimmerman, great year, so a couple Atlanta Braves there. Picking up the slack because Freddie Freeman missed most of the year. Matt Holliday, David Wright, Kershaw. Bregman had a really good year for the Padres playing shortstop. Seager, Yelich, Posey, Bumgarner, Stanton. I feel like these are all guys whose seasons we've looked at already. Here's Seager's final season stats for those of you curious. But yeah, that's awards season, and now it's time for free agency. Free agents have filed. This isn't a bad free agency class by any means. You know, the top-tier talent isn't as top-tier as it's been in past years, but you're going to see a decent amount of depth as well. So Carlos Gonzalez projected to be the top free agent. Um, in 2017 with Colorado, he had a 119 OPS+, plus. but honestly, in all the years other than that in this save, I mean, let's look at his MLB stats just to make it a little bit easier. Uh, he had just been monstrous for the Rockies. He is 32 now, but he's uh, projected to be the top free agents. Uh, Jared Parker, who's a guy who we've been following his career with great interest, really consistent pitcher for the Oakland A's in this save. He might be leaving Oakland. He's relatively young. He's 29. Jeremy Hefner, the uh, pitching coach for the New York Mets. I mean, he's been a stud for the New York Mets. I kind of hope he stays with the New York Mets, to be honest with you, just because it's been a lot of fun to watch him. I mean, his ratings in the game are just so balanced, so good. Chris Medlin uh, was the Cy Young Award winner in 2015. He hits free agency following 2017. Uh, He is 32, but I mean, he's pretty beast in this save, so I could see him getting a pretty fat contract. He's rated fourth, but I could see him, you know, maybe even being the highest paid free agent. We'll just have to see. And when Carnacion hits free agency, he's been uh, pretty much good like every year so far this save. He had one blip in 2014 where he wasn't good, but he's like, you can count on him for like 40 homers. And he actually has 150 OPS plus in the last two seasons, which is really impressive. Probably not a lot of hitters can say that around the league right now. He is uh, going to be 35 next year, so uh, age is going to limit. Uh, how many contract years he can get, but AAV should be there. Matt Harvey hits uh, hits free agency. I'm sure there's been a lot of interest in Matt Harvey, and um, I feel like maybe I should have focused on him more because he has had some good seasons, and yet at the same time, man, it's all about Jeremy Hefner these days. Like, come on, Matt Harvey. You know, this is a he- this is Jeremy Hefner's world, Matt Harvey. Um, but he's done well for himself. Freddie Freeman's a free agent, which gives me a little bit of, uh, I don't know, it's freaking me out a little bit. You know, in those 50 games he played in uh, 2017, he was really, really good, actually. He had a 154 OPS+. plus. He has been really good throughout this save. And, uh, yes, uh, oh, man, I you know, I don't know if the lockout will be fixed when this episode comes out. I don't know if there will be more Freddie Freeman news, but I'm getting worried. I'll put it that way. As a Braves fan, I'm getting worried. Matt Kemp's a free agent. He had a four-war season for the Cubs in uh, uh, 2017. I don't know why I had to think so hard about that. It's hard to keep track of the years. So he signed a five-year deal with the Cubs after leaving uh, L.A. And I think ultimately did solid under that deal. Maybe underperformed a little bit, though. In L.A., he had back-to-back eight-war seasons. This was a real-life season, not simulated, but in 2012, he did well to basically repeat that. He should have won that MVP in 2011. Uh, that's all I can think of when I see Matt Kempe should have won MVP. Last free agent, Josh Johnson. Josh Johnson, he had the injuries. He did not pitch well in 2017 uh, with the uh, Detroit Tigers. Actually, though, still 101 ERA+. plus. That shows you what the offense was like. He has a prickly personality, to say the least. But, you know, and he's going to be 34 next year. But, man, he's been really good in this save. Career 3.25 ERA nearing, um, you know, 2,000 career innings pitched, 51 F4. I mean, look at Josh Johnson go. He's he's maybe not Hall of Fame, but he could definitely end, you know, Hall of Very Good. And he was a guy that was really fun to watch back in the day. And when you take over a simulation from 10 years ago, you know, he's one of those guys who's, you know, to use the line again, a career that we would watch with great interest. So those are your top free agents. Uh, I'll catch up with you guys with the Hall of Fame class. Here's your Hall of Fame class. Chipper Jones and Jim Tomey are in as first-year players. Vlad Guerrero, Pudge Rodriguez, Todd Helton, Larry Walker getting close. 
Um, you have some, you know, more familiar names now on the ballot. Andrew Jones is on the ballot as he is in real life. Um, Tim Hudson's there. He just fell off in real life. Jeff Kent's there. Carlos Delgado. You just take a look at it. I've lost a little bit of interest. Tim Raines dropped, actually. That's a real shame. Um, but yeah, the Hall of Fame is a little bit jank in this, but it's been kind of interesting to watch because it's definitely been different from what we see in real life. So there's your Hall of Fame voting results. Most of the top free agents have signed, so let's go check that out. So just as a heads up, two of the top remaining free agents yet to sign. One of them is Jose Altuve, and Jose Altuve's career has not quite gone to plan, I should say. It's not like he's been awful necessarily, but it just hasn't gone to plan. However, in 2017 with the Milwaukee Brewers, he had a really good year. So uh, 140 OPS plus, hit 337. He had a very, I mean, that's a Jose Altuve type of year. It took him a while to get there, but he hits free agency at a pretty good time for his wallet. Craig Kimball, also a free agent. He was definitely key for those Yankees. Closed out uh, game six of their World Series against his former team, the Atlanta Braves. Um, but yeah, he's been such a good reliever, but it's like it seems like he just keeps getting one-year deals. Anyways, Cargo's going to Detroit. Detroit gets Cargo. Uh, that's going to be interesting to see. He moves from Coors, which is a huge stadium, to uh, Detroit, where they also have a huge stadium. Chris Medlin gets a four-year deal worth $88 million with the Cardinals. Okay, Cardinals have some pretty strong pitching, I must say. Freddie Freeman gets an eight-year, 128 deal with the Marlins. You know, if I had to see Freddie Freeman in a different uniform, at least it's not a team I just absolutely like loathe as a Braves fan. I've got nothing against the Marlins. If I had to root for a team in the division that was not the Atlanta Braves, I'd root for the Marlins. It's interesting, they haven't swapped over, like logos and stuff i guess i guess that stuff doesn't really update um but the, okay uh, matt kemp going to toronto toronto's starting to build up some bats i would say it'd be interesting to see how that works out for them a five-year deal for matt kemp though i mean he'll be 38 when that's over so hopefully he ages gracefully uh jed jerko won a gold glove award by the way but he goes to tampa bay that's a very tampa bay race type of player Brewers, uh, they add slugger Edwin Encarnacion to the mix. So they have Encarnacion. They also have Crush Davis, who had 33 home runs last year. So there you go, Brewers. Uh, they were 65 and 97, but they do add Edwin. Jeremy Hefner's going to the New York Yankees because the New York Yankees have to sign someone good every year. Um, sorry, Mets fans, but that's been fun to watch. Jeremy Hefner joining the rotation uh, alongside Sabathia and King Felix. Oh, Oscar Tavares is here. Here's a look at Oscar Tavares, guys. Um, he's been playing for um, St. Louis. Let's see his career stats. They haven't been the greatest, I must say. Um, but here's Oscar Tavares. I'm sure a lot of people probably have been asking about that. Uh, Yankees defending World Series champions, by the way, going into this year. So, uh, And the rich get richer with Jeremy Hefner. I can't believe I'm saying that. Uh, Jared Parker joins the Detroit Tigers. I would hope to see the Detroit Tigers do better this year because they have added some talent for sure. They add Parker to the mix. Um, you know, they do add, uh, who was I just talking about? Uh, they added, uh, goodness gracious, they added Cargo. Okay. And, um, you know, their pitching, which started out as a strength, um, slowly deteriorating, I must say. So Verlander, this is what Verlander's career looks like at the moment. And, you know, it... Ever since 2014, it hasn't been great, basically. And so that's where Verlander is at at the moment. You know, in in real life, in around 2017-ish is when he started to have this sort of late career renaissance, and it was a lot of fun. Because I can see the star ratings and the potential ratings, I'm not sure if that's going to happen here. But there's Verlander, for those of you that are curious. Of course, Josh Johnson's been kind of the star pitching for them not Scherzer but Josh Johnson of all people here's Scherzer he's a free agent um you know apart from like maybe around here it just never really got going for Max Scherzer in this save someone who has of course dominated the last decade of baseball in real life uh one culprit I could say would be this uh, major injury torn rotator cuff a 16 month injury he suffered um, it was actually the, not the first time he'd suffered such an injury, so missed a lot of time, and that just seems to have thrown him off uh, his career trajectory. Hey, that's part of the simulation, so that's a look at the Detroit Tigers. Any other interesting free agents uh, besides that? Parker going to the Tigers, as I mentioned. Rick Porcello is going to Baltimore. Oh, and here we go. Matt Harvey 
gets a $100 million deal for six years with the LA Dodgers. His ratings are actually quite nice. His ratings, I would say, are better than his stats. So that might be a really shrewd signing by the uh, Los Angeles Dodgers to get him in the mix. Kershaw, Harvey, Masterson, that top three has a lot of potential that could compete with uh, a lot of teams' top threes in the league. So those are your top free agents so far. Let's sim out, uh, you know, until spring training. We can check out interesting trades and check out winners and losers of this offseason. Couple trades coming through this offseason that involve some big name real life MLB stars. One of those is Araldis Chapman. Araldis Chapman is joining the Chicago Cubs. You can see the details of that trade right here. It's not a super interesting trade because Araldis Chapman in this simulation is not quite Araldis Chapman in real life. In fact, that may be an understatement. He has a career of 3.91 ERA. In 2014, he was brilliant. But that's honestly been about it. He has not been able to keep pace with the likes of Jansen and Kimbrell. I think there is a culprit right here, and that culprit is that just a few days into this simulation, he suffered a torn rotator cuff that was a major injury to his shoulder. So he just hasn't ever really been the same, or all this Chapman. But he joins the Cubs, which is fun because he won a World Series with them. Brand Crawford's going to join the Atlanta Braves. I think the Giants just appear to be in rebuild mode at the moment. They trade Crawford to the Braves, and that's a nice get for the Braves because he's like, you know, 3 4 war player every year, it seems like, playing some really good defense at shortstop. The two main prospects they get in return in this trade Braylon Marquez looks like he could be a really good pitcher. Um, yeah, he's only 19 years old. He's got a really nice repertoire. Hopefully that can develop. And then Malik Smith, he's more developed. He looks like the type of guy who could be like, a good outfielder on like a rebuilding team or like a good like I mean like a starting outfielder or like a good like fourth outfielder on you know like a good competitive team a strong team uh Phillies have themselves a trade with the twins Matt Bush is going to potentially be the new closer in Minnesota he had a really good 2016 uh, in 2017 not quite as good but yeah 26 saves in, in 2016 for the Phillies, he's a three and a half star player. These are really nice ratings. Matt Bush joins the Minnesota Twins as a closer. The main prospect in return is this guy, Oscar Manuel Rojas, 18 year old pitching prospect. Could get close to a league average starting pitcher if everything goes their way. And then this is a really interesting trade. I've talked about Machado a lot in the context of talking about uh, Brett Laurie, basically. But uh, here's Machado. He um, is not. Quite, he's more like a nerfed version of Machado. He's not a bad player by any means. Here's a look at his um, career stats. He's basically a league average hitter and an above average third baseman defensively. But I just thought people would be interested to know that he is going to join the Los Angeles Dodgers in return for 27-year-old Jack Martyr. Uh, Gerardo Reyes, who looks like he could be a really good reliever. Baltimore get him. So yeah, Machado joins the Dodgers. I'm interested to see where he fits in. Looks like he's going to be the starting third baseman for him. Seager's going to play second base, and Cabrera currently slotted in at shortstop. So interesting stuff from the Dodgers. They get Manny Machado, who actually around this time, they did trade for him in real life from the Baltimore Orioles. So, you know, there you go. And uh, Mike Soroka is going to join the Cleveland Spiders. Um, he still has potential to develop, but he has got a long way to grow. He's only 20 years old, but that's just a heads up for you Braves fans out there. Mike Soroka joining the Cleveland Spiders minor league system. Some really good reliever free agents left to sign. Kimbrel, Romo, Jake McGee, Chris Perez. Kelvin Herrera has been dominant throughout this, but he did not have a good 2017 with the Phillies necessarily. But all the other years he's had, brilliant. I think he could be a really good pickup for whoever gets him. I'm sure there's some curiosity about Jose Altuve. He signed a six-year deal worth uh, $70 million with the White Sox, so he's going to be on the White Sox. Keep in mind, they also have Marcus Simeon. So, you know, currently it looks like Altuve, DH, DH Simeon, second base. Adam Duvall is actually their third baseman, and he's had a really good uh, time with them. He's had some really good seasons, but it's it's interesting to see him playing third base. I'm sure he played that in the minors at some point, and that's why he's a third baseman in this, but yep. It's going to be interesting to see how the White Sox sort of shape themselves with the addition of Jose Altuve. So now what we can do is we can look at the offseason summary by team. Granted, the offseason is not over. There's still a lot of free agents left to sign, but we can look at the teams who have added war and who have lost war. Your biggest winner so far appears to be the St. Louis Cardinals. Here's the St. Louis Cardinals. They add Chris Medlin. They add Chris Archer as well via trade. We should talk about that. 
Um, Adam Warren, that's a trade we talked about already. I think that was the trade that featured Oscar Tavares and also Alex Verdugo. So the Yankees get some outfield pieces, but you know, good addition there for the St. Louis Cardinals, who are clearly in sort of a win-now mode. They add McHugh, they add Rafael Soriano. Let's talk about this Chris Archer trade, because I must have just missed it when I was scanning for trades. St. Louis receives Chris Archer. Tampa Bay receives Jordan Patterson and Jose LeClerc, who's going to be, you know, I mean, he's a, he's uh, he looks like he's going to be a real stud, could be best reliever in the game very, very soon. Um, Chris Archer's contract situation, this is his last year on the deal, so that's a big thing to give up. Um, but you know, if it, if it ends with the St. Louis Cardinals winning the world series in 2018, I mean, obviously it's gotta be worth it. They've made some big additions and they're a really good team already. Uh, they lost Ian Kennedy, Matt Carpenter to free agency. Um, Ken, Kennedy signed with the Tigers as the Tigers tried to build back their rotation. But yeah, I mean, the Cardinals looking really strong. I'm really liking where this Cardinals team is headed. Would like to see them win a world series at some point. The Chicago White Sox add some more. Jose Altuve is their signing. They also signed Francisco Liriano, who had a decent year last year for the Angels, and they haven't really lost too much. They lost this guy David Cooper, but also like they have that uh, they have that Ramos guy to play first base, so uh, they can handle that. Phillies have done well this off season. Uh, they went 73 and 89 last year, but they add Drew Smiley, they add Addison Reed, they add Jose Quintana via free agency. They stay active on that market. Um, they did lose Matt Bush via trade, and they did lose Ian Desmond free agency, but they could sign him back, really, if they wanted to. So Philly's making some shrewd moves, adding some more. Your biggest victims of the offseason, one of them is the Houston Astros. They have not added a single player yet, uh, but they do lose J.J. Hardy, Jordan Lyles, Dexter Fowler. You know, they, ha- they aren't losing the big names, so I wouldn't worry too much about the Astros. They can make some moves and still make this work for them. Washington Nationals have not added a single player. They lose Adam Lind, Ionetta, Denorfia. Let's look at Jimmy Rollins. Jimmy Rollins, 39 years old in this uh, simulation at the moment. Still looking to play. Not sure if he'll get a contract. This could be the end of Jimmy Rollins' career. But if it is the end, he has 2,600 hits. He has 48 war. Um, Great career for Jimmy Rollins. Wrapping things up. He played for the Yankees, Royals, and Washington once he left the... um, Phillies. So, uh, and then the worst team, unfortunately, the Oakland Athletics. Oakland Athletics have lost uh, a net of 14 more so far. Where are they? They add Prado, but I mean, they lose. They lose Parker to the Detroit. They lose Nolasco. Well, he's still a free agent. Jed Jerko, Straley. Yeah. Oh, and Brian Morris is a free agent. I didn't even notice Brian Morris is a free agent. That's really interesting. So a lot of great relievers to be signed. Some of the best relievers we've seen throughout this simulation. Still up for grabs, but I think I'm going to leave you guys there. That's going to be a wrap on this episode.